Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Alright, let's continue with some space exploration. Uh, we've got about... Let's see. Seven supercomputers to go before we're finished with this build. I think I would like to make sure that happens. Uh, we've only got one... Almost two available here. Um, so that's going to be a minute. How, how many more quantum Naquium processors do we have? Uh, like 16. That, I could trigger a delivery early, but I, I don't think we need to do that, really. Um, wait, why is this not unloading? Oh, there it goes. The junk data cards are just a bit difficult to see on the space belts, I think. Yeah, it's just waiting for this part to be empty, for example, um, before it unloads the rest of this down here. Well, either this will be enough to keep up with our junk data card production and or we'll come back here and give it more supercomputers at some point. Um, I was in the middle of trying to fix something to do with these tankers. What was it? Oh yeah, we need to move Cryonite Slush. Uh, Alright, so we've got Cryonite Slush in the rail network. Um, I think we've already got the Cryonite Slush tanker. 3009 is the ID that we went with. I really should come up with a, a consistent system for clamp IDs for next time. Uh, but let's see. Um, we were just making... Oh yeah, I tried to put it here, but I accidentally gave it an ID that was already in use, so immediately we had a petroleum storage, uh, petroleum tanker land here. We need to get the construction spiders back down here, so that these trains can move on. Also, why is there scaffolding here? That's, that's a little weird. I mean, if a spaceship came and left, that scaffolding would just be destroyed, but still. Um, so we need to bring these, uh, rocket booster tanks that we're using because they have four times the storage density. Um, let's see, Cryonite. Oh, we also need this clamp over here. Uh, 3009, Cryonite slush less than 10, go back to Nalvis. Um... And I wasn't even bothering to change the names of these stations. Um, they're already sort of set up in a way that I don't have to change anything. Because they're pickup stations. So yeah, I think that is done already. We just need to increase our throughput of Cryonite Slush. Um... Now, my estimate when I made these new blocks is we probably only need, like, two. Uh, so, for starters, we want to aim for probably, like, a thousand cryonite slush and see if this all gets saturated. Uh, and then maybe we want to add more if we find that it's still not catching up. Um, but it'll probably... Honestly, it'll probably just depend on what fits neatly into a block. So do we need water or anything? I don't think so. We need water for ice, um, but we don't need... We only need cryonite rod and sulfuric acid and in very small quantities. Cryonite slush, so we can pretty much put this anywhere. Um, but between all of this oil production and where our cryonite slush pickup is going to be, is a pretty sensible spot, I would say. We are still using these, right? Yeah. 
Okay. So... Uh, we'll start with... A drop-off station. And the usual... Wait, what's this? Uh, I see some entities that got left behind. Yep. Good now. Okay. Uh, so, rail chain signal goes here. Request a station goes here. We'll build it in half a block, see what kind of throughput we get, and we can double it if uh if it turns out we want more which i think is likely considering that this is only uh only 163 crinite slush per second and that's got tier 6 modules seven speed modules and everything is there a world where I just don't bother with the productivity modules? I don't think so. I don't know. Maybe I could go like prod 3s. How many prods do we even have these days? I haven't been using a lot of them for a while. Uh, we've got like 200 here. Uh, 50 here. Uh, zero here right now. Well, two, actually. I'm carrying... 300. Uh, how fast have we been making them? Consistently. 4.3 per minute over the last hour, and 4 per minute over the last 10 hours. That's actually pretty good. I think I can... I think I can lower the bar just a little bit. For what I use the prod sixes for. In fact, maybe I should upgrade this. Though I don't think we've ever had a single throughput issue for Aeroframe bulkheads. Anyway, let's not get too distracted. Uh, we'll get the usual beacon. We'll get some rows of Crinite slush machines. Um, I'm just trying to think the best way to lay these out here. So we got six machines on each side. I'm sure we can just do 3B pipes down here and the throughput should be fine. But we could probably fit pumps if we want to as well. Yep. Uh, so let's see. We need to get some in here, but we also need to get it down here. Uh... That's actually pretty easy. And just for the sake of consistency with the colors of the pipes, I'll even do that. Uh, and then output. It's going to look something like this. And then, can we flip it? Of course not. Uh, temporary blueprint, remove the chemical plants, and flip. And then just copy this down. Uh, that's not quite right. Okay, so under one beacon... We could probably fit two beacons. We might need to because this thing's this stuff's relatively slow. Uh, only three hundred and twenty-seven crinite slush per second. I think we want four times that. It's only 
slightly more than half a belt of cryonite rod as well, and hardly any sulfuric acid. Uh, so let's see that. Oh, and each column, five point seven six per second for each of these. Uh, very very slow input and output, so it's not going to be difficult getting the throughput. We do need to figure out how to get the cryonite rods in. Um, we can obviously... well no, we can't actually. Hmm. I wonder if... if we do these in pairs, then there's... oh, there's literally no way to do both inputs for this one. Uh, we could do a pipe here, an underground here, and make this a bit wider. Well, not an underground, a long-arm inserter. Uh, I would prefer not to make it wider, if possible. Then again, we've got... Hold on, let's just measure this. Uh, we've got eight tiles between these. So we could make each of these... We could make each uh, beacon section four tiles wider. I don't think we want to go vertical here. That's going to be... Well, actually... Considering, considering how slow the input-output is, we probably could double it vertically as well. So it could look something like this. So we could actually fit eight times this in a single block, probably. That is 2.6k cryonite slush. Which... is actually a bit more than we would need to support this if it ever went full speed. So I think I would like to try to design it to fit this, even if we don't fill all of it out to start with. Um, so we've got... I'm pretty sure we'll have to widen the middle part just a little bit. Probably one tile in each direction. And there'll have to be a input belt here. Let's just move this over one tile to start. Um, so on the outside it should be pretty easy. We just go... Underground belts and inserters. Very straightforward. Snap to grid relative and burr. This side is... I was going to say a little different, but actually we can do the exact same thing. Yeah, we can just do underground belts here. Uh, we still did have to move it one tile away from the white area beacon, but that'll be, that'll be nice and neat and consistent and straightforward. Cool. Uh, let's do the copy paste clip thing again. Just have to remove this. And our spiders are looking a bit confused right now. A bunch of them have picked up chemical plants. They've got them in their trash slots. Um, I could just go down there personally. I don't think I've got anything pressing that I need to be here for personally. Um, and I can just put down a roboport, put down some logistic bots, and it'll 
put things back the way they should be. This spider is looking a little bit confused. Also, why didn't we get more rocket booster tanks? Send them back after, uh, back to the mall after this. Okay. Oh, I'll take the module box down. May as well deliver those. Okay. Uh, first of all, I don't care about getting rid of that. Let's turn off this auto launch condition. And... Go. Fantastic. I didn't leave my spider, did I? No, we're good. Alright, let's continue designing this. Uh, can we fit four of these? Let's start from... I'm pretty sure the belts could be shared here. Let's see. Let's suppose the belt is feeding twice as many machines and then twice again. Uh, this is 12, so 24, 48. It actually could feed 48 machines. No problem. All right, so this would look like something like this. Oh, that's too far over. Or well, not far over enough. Oh, it's actually closer than I thought it would be. Let's remove these bits of straight rail, not those bits. One more. And these ones as well, please. Uh, the rest of the rail looks okay. And then... Put this down here. Are we going to get beacon sickness? No, we're good. Uh, and I think if we're only going to do one half of this block, at least for now, then I'd like to do it on the left side. As is tradition. Uh, but I'm having trouble telling where that lines up. Uh-oh. Is that the middle? I think it is. Yep. All right. So, I have to wait till a beacon is placed properly with... Oh, this has overlap. Oh. Hmm. That's a pretty big overlap, actually. Yeah, I wasn't... I didn't think of that. I'm surprised I didn't think of that, because I think this would have been the first time we've done two rows of... Uh, two columns of beacons on each side like this. Beacon sickness lol, indeed. Pink pajamas, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I don't know if there's a way to make this work, but if there was, 192 of these machines would only be... Uh, it's actually slightly more than two belts of cryonite rods. So that's unfortunate. We could definitely fit two belts worth of cryonite rods coming in from up here. Um, but yeah, this is a little bit too much. But more importantly, we can't... I don't think we can make this work with the beacons. 
A third column with the center not being beaconed would work, yeah. Alright, uh, undo, redo, redo, delete this, and back to the drawing board, I guess. Let's get in our speedy spider, and head on over. A third column with the center not being beaconed. Yeah, I think you're right. I mean, we could definitely do... three columns on either side. That's 50% more as opposed to doubling it. I was wondering if there might be a way to... Hmm... It should be overkill anyway, but that's hardly an excuse. If we have... So let's assume this is as close as our machines can get to our beacon. And then something like this. Oh, we could even... Well, that's too close. Um, we've got four columns and we want eight columns, if possible. I think if we go for something like this, we're going to get beacon sickness on the other side of the block anyway. Like uh, Something like this is what I was thinking of. But yeah, that wouldn't work if we want to go ham with the entire block, eventually. So we'll just do 50% more, horizontally. So that's going to look like this, and this. And this, and this, and we're obviously not going to be able to replicate it horizontally within a half. We can replicate it twice, uh, we can double it vertically though. So half a block gives us 981 cryonite slush per second. That's still pretty good, and it's comfortably within two belts of cryonite slush. Alright. Uh, I would like to position this somewhere that's convenient for the input-output stations. So we're going to have uh, one fluid, one solid input. You know what? I really don't know why I haven't blueprinted this before. Let's do it now. I'm not going to do it specifically for... Um, input or output. Oh no. But we keep needing this. It only takes a second to make, but it would take... A second less to make uh, if I had a blueprint. We're gonna go green wire and check that it lines up. This is our fluid station. I'm just gonna put that next to the LTN train stops. Hello there, uh, Pospec. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so this is a pickup from the train stop. We also have... where are my blueprints? Uh, 90 per second from here. Whoops. We have one, two, three, four belts. That works out well. Not that uh, these two don't need 
more than these single ones, but it's fine, as long as it saturates, which it will. Uh, I don't think we really need a lane balancer. Just a belt balancer should be fine, because we should be taking from both sides of the belt evenly, regardless. In fact, we could do something a bit more symmetrical, perhaps. We definitely could. Let's do a little custom one here. And... Why do I have so many space underground belts right now? I think I remember vaguely... I was taking lots of space transport belt to uh, Stardust for making that new type of outpost. Okay. So this goes here, this goes here. Block this off, block this off. And go. And this is going to be nice and symmetrical. That almost lines up really well. Oh well, it's fine. Perfect. Uh, is this... This isn't even in the middle or anything. But it has to be. I mean, it's in the middle horizontally. Um, I don't suppose these are going to line up with the fluid. This one is. There's also the outputs on the side. Oops. Hey, Morpheus now. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so then we've got... Oh, I didn't even put a station there yet. Pick up station... And like so. Cryonite slush provider. Uh, hundred K threshold. Short trains permitted. And that'll be fine. We could probably go for a bit more storage here, although we don't need the green wires for that side. Actually, uh, we probably could, because then it'll schedule more trains if there's more fluid. Okay, so this one kind of lines up perfectly. Um one off. Oh, except I haven't moved this to the center where it rightfully belongs. Uh, I think it's here. Yep. And we can move this down uh, here. Add a little thing in here. Rhinite rod pickup. Connect the chests and s connect the containers to LTN. Request stack threshold. Request threshold. All good. Uh, two trains. Rhinite rod is. A bit more than one train load, it's quite slow. And cry uh not cry night. Uh 
sulfuric acid. Is also quite slow. We can probably let it get all the way down to 20k before we request another one. But on the other hand, uh, Coronite Slush is really, really important now, so I think I would rather make sure we request it whenever we have it. Alright. Uh, did we not put filters on this? We did not. And then... And that's basically it. Uh, I don't suppose this would fit. It's also one-off. Hmm. That's kind of brutal. Oh, that just goes in as well. That's good. And should we put a pump here? Maybe not. It's probably fine. Although we could even allow way more storage of Crynite Slush in case there's a run on it. Actually, there'll definitely kind of be a run on it because of the the way the tanker works. Uh, so maybe we should have more storage here. Considering how slow Crynite Slush is going to be, this is a lot of storage anyway. Uh, so now it's eight tiles. The worst number of tiles. It's fine. Uh, and just to double check, even the double columns only give us less than 200 per second, so we don't really need to worry about pumps or anything. Well, maybe. Maybe we should give it some pumps. Uh, so how many tiles is this? I think it's six. Yeah. Just because the more full a pipe section gets, the slower the fluid moves through it. And this should actually be connected as well. Alright, we probably should have summoned our trains by now. Uh, Crynite rod and sulfuric acid. Whoops. I can't shift, shift delete this and paste it. Nope. Everyone live streaming Factorio. There we go. Uh, request a chest. And go. Alright, so if we're only getting... Oh, wait, wasn't I gonna... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wasn't I gonna, like, double this vertically? Did I forget? Let's see if we can fit that, for starters. Uh, this is four tiles away from... Actually, no, let me pick that up myself. This is four tiles away from the center. Um... Let's check the rate. 
Yeah, it's only 34. Yeah, we were going to double this. Whoops. Okay. Um, I'll try fitting it over this side. And we'll just leave this up if it's not going to work out. Okay. Uh, I think... I think we can probably pull this off. Maybe. Hmm. Might have to do... Might have to do the fluid on this side? Uh, or maybe we just don't... Come to think of it, since Cryonite rods are relatively slow... Uh, what are we looking at? 70 per second. That's not that slow, but we don't necessarily need 24 chests here. Can we somehow fit? Maybe if we go the Crynite Rods on the other side, fluid on this side, then it's probably going to be too hard to get Crynite Rods to the middle. Maybe not. Let's say we go with this first. Or maybe we just end up moving the whole thing down and having... Having the fluid on the outside like we usually do. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's still double check that. Looks good. Yeah, I think we'll probably end up moving it down a few tiles. We can, of course, put this straight into here, this straight into here, this straight into here, and this straight into here. But not merging and splitting tends to cause some issues if we want to do a even unload. Hey, Krasus. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, so this can go down almost as far as we'd like. Uh, here, for example. We can do the same thing for unloading here, except slightly different. So I built a coal liquefaction rail block similar to yours. Did you need separate plastic slash sulfur slash TNT arrays to supply your base or just made more coal liquefaction blocks? Uh, well, the coal liquefaction blocks I made, all, all of the oil blocks I made are sort of multi-purpose. So they produce all these different products in one place. Uh, in hindsight, I would maybe... Well, I would definitely produce all the fluids in one place, but maybe not the plastic explosives. Uh, probably the sulfur. I don't know. I don't know where to draw the line. Because I ended up making explosives and plastic in their own places. Because we needed so much of it. Um, it does obviously make a ton of sense to make sulfur right where you've got um, the petroleum and water already. Although it does mean you need to pump a whole lot more of water into this area. Hey Revan, fat boy not so slim, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome, hope you're doing well. Separates, separate slash additional plastic for sure, oil to light to petroleum to plastic. Yeah. I think just given what has actually happened uh, with my rail blocks, I would probably do... Isn't it coal and... Uh, isn't it plastic and explosives that need coal? 
So not for coal liquefaction. I would probably do plastic and explosives somewhere else, but it might be convenient um, to do coal uh, to do those two at coal liquefaction since the coal is already there. TLDR lol. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Yeah, I don't have like a a final thought on exactly what I think is like the best way to go about oil. Um, there's of course various pros and cons and I've tried various experiments. All right. Uh, that actually is too close if we want to go off of this 3B, but we don't have to do that. Um, we do need... Oh, is this actually too close? No, we can move this up a tile. And then... Split this here. And I think we're good. My old oil setup, my crude oil kept running out as the oil patches kept going nearly dry, so I converted. Oh, for coal liquefaction, yeah. Uh, I don't think we can get much tighter here, not without a merger. So this is actually, yeah, this is as good as it gets. Um, we can pipe this through like so. This one's a bit more awkward unless we change these pipes a little bit. I guess we don't have room for a pump. No, we do. We just need to uh, change the way we do this bit. Let's remove those, and those, actually, and those, and those, and we can fit a pump here with no additional space, that can go there, that can go there, that can go there. And so on. Filters are reverse. Filters are reverse. Uh, what do you mean by that? Filters are reverse. I don't understand. Also, what is going on with this spider? Uh, did they really take all of my logistic bots? Oh no. Uh, who has the logistic bots? Cough them up. Maybe I could handcraft one. Wait, hold on a sec. Logistic... Yeah, I don't have any. I'm just going to shove one in here. Oh, here, here, here's, here they are. Forget that. I think it's because I picked up the RoboPod at the wrong time. Or oh, they had no storage. There we go. You're blocking the side you're outputting to. Blocking the side you're outputting to. Uh, with this? No output. I don't understand. 
by the unloading train. Unloading train. As in the drop-off station? Also, that can be a chain. That splitters with filters. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. True. Thank you. Okay. Yes, that one, indeed. Hidden in plain sight. Crouching splitter hidden filter. Alright, that looks pretty good. Um, I think we're still going to need to send our spiders back for more chemical plants. Tasman, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good to see you again. Alright, for starters, let's pick this up. And this part as well. Can we just copy this like so? Not quite. Uh, that doesn't look quite right. Thanks, you're welcome. Alright, uh, we don't even have enough chemical plants to check the throughput for all of these, weirdly enough. Uh, I feel like one of the spiders must be a bit messed up somehow. Let's send them back to the mall for a moment. Uh, and hopefully we can send them right back. And get this done. So we're looking at 144 on each side. Uh, maximum speed, but with efficiency modules. That is 6.8 times 1.44. Almost a thousand cryonite slush per second on each side at the cost of 70 cryonite rod per second. And the same for sulfuric acid, which is pretty trivial. And then... Same, same, but different. That actually lines up the same way. Uh, and this can go over here as well. Don't forget to let LTN know what we've already got here. And here. And here. And then this is Cronet Rod Provider. I mean, not Rod, Cronet Slush Provider. All of these settings. Alright, if this isn't enough to keep up with the Cryonite Slush, uh, I will be a little surprised and mildly disappointed. End game is coming? Uh, yeah. Oh! Oh, Deep Space Science has been in motion. Deep Space Science. Let's say Pack 4. Uh, 
consumption. Wait, what? Hold on. I think it's called something different. Oh, we're trying to research pack four, so it's pack three. Uh, big spike 7.5 minutes ago. Wow. Yeah, we went through, uh, 600 and... S oh, that was production. This was consumption. Six minutes ago, uh, in the space of, like, less than a minute, we went through 606 of these. To get a bit more than double that research done. Before we know it, we're going to blink and it's going to go from 76% to 100. Is that station... You know what, while we're waiting, I'm just going to... Where's my remote? I'm just going to run over here. And deconstruct this. I'm pretty sure our regular deconstruction gang is on the other side of the planet. More or less. And this as well, please. All right, construction spiders look like they've been sorted out. Hopefully they've got what they need. And let's not forget to add... Cryonite slush icon right about here. Very, very good. Uh, we are getting closer to this thing launching already than I would have expected by now. Um, so that's something. But yeah, this will obviously... I will be mildly surprised and disappointed if this block does not catch us up to where we need to be. Other things that we can do while we're waiting for research that I sort of forgot about for a little while uh, is we can go ahead and build our power plant at Foenestra. Um, we also need to supply it with antimatter fuel though. And we'll need a... We will actually need a consistent flow for that. Turn in deliveries now whilst it's getting built. Turn in deliveries. Um, you mean like go and get the uh, the tier 9 modules from the mysterious structures? Let's just go 500. And, whoops. Uh, let's pick this up. Let's go request some antimatter. Where did I put... Where did I put the request for antimatter reactors in this place? Or did I remove it? Yeah, I removed it. I forgot. Okay. Uh, we're going to request a bit of the old antimatter canisters. Monday's man. Spelling is hard. Tra turn on the trains for cryo slush. Oh, right. I think I did for one of them at least. No, wait. I turned it off because it was like work in progress. Made a mistake. Alright, um, I definitely want the spiders to finish uh, the ones on the left first. 
I mean, on the right. I want one of these completely finished. At least. So, right about here. And I keep pressing the Windows button. Whoops. There we go. Does this keyboard have a way to turn that off? I forget. Not that I can see. Remove all of that. Uh, we're gonna wreck our power supply. Although we probably don't even need it at this stage. But still. Nope, we're fine, actually. Alright. Pick on with that. No signals here. All good. Uh, how am I for... Oh, that's right, I've got the newfangled fusion reactors. Uh, what are we on? 3,000 kilowatts. It's still draining all the robo-ports, though. Uh, so let's get some more. That'll... Probably do it. 6,000 kilowatts. And then we could probably go... Oh, we've got eight robo-ports, even. That's good. I'm not quite a supercharger, but this is pretty effective. Alright, we got that side built. Fantastic. Let's see if we can finish the other side. Does your spider have one too? Uh, no. This spider is just for transport. Nothing but what it takes to have the maximum number of exoskeleton legs. This is actually as high tech as it gets if you're going to have five legs. I also occasionally use the trunk. Keep that empty. Uh, Alright, we need even more chemical plants. And here comes the cryonite. Arriving first on the side that's complete. Very, very nice. Also, we probably didn't even need... Oh, no. Oh, no. Wait, wait. Spiders, come back. Come back. I didn't mean it. I'll be good. Uh, yeah, I forgot the minor detail of the input pipes. Oh, that's a perfect fit. I'm going to pretend I did that on purpose. That's beautiful. And then over this side as well. And go. Fantastic. And back to the mall with you. Beautiful. Why are we not making Crynite Slush yet? Oh! Wait, 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 no, oh no, no, oh no. That, that was a blunder. Oh no. Uh, and I did on this side as well. Confident as you like. Alright. Oh, my inventory's too full. I didn't realize there was copper, there was ore left in here. Thank you, thank you. Alright, so we're gonna add some pumps here. 
Luckily, it's very easy to do that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. All right, so, um, I made it a little bit difficult to get sulfuric acid in the middle, but the rate that we need for sulfuric acid is so slow that I think we can just go around the edge. Well, not around the edge exactly, but down here. And down here. And then this can connect. And this can connect. I wonder if that would look better. Uh-oh. Um, I should probably... Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. 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 I shouldn't have... Wait. Stop. 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 Uh... This is bad. We've already got 3,000... Oh no. Am I just gonna have to rotate all of these for now? Kind of glad the spiders weren't in range to do this part yet. So there was only sulfuric acid coming in on the side so far. Because the spiders are just well, literally one tile out of range. And make that four times worse, or three times worse. Okay. Uh, I think we just have to get rid of this sulfuric uh, crinite slush. Deconstruct the pumps temporarily and empty the sulfuric acid. Uh, yeah, I'm pumping the sulfuric acid back up this way to empty it. Uh, I guess we're gonna just delete these pumps. Oh wait, I can just turn them around for a second. Okay, so those are empty. There's actually... If I move this up here... There's still just some whiffs of sulfuric acid in here. But I was going to say this has... Oh, it's still connected to everything. Uh, can we pump this down here? No, 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 no. Maybe. I don't know. Stop, 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 stop. Okay. This is just about empty. Close enough. Uh, let's move these up here. Delete all of the sulfuric acid that is where the cryonite slush is supposed to be. Rotate this back. Carefully, because these ones rotate back the other way. Alright, so this does go here. And this does go here.
Sulfuric acid goes in... Not here. Not here. Not here. Not here. What are the bots waiting for? Okay, it's one of those things. How overfull is my inventory? Yes. And the bots are going for more. Okay. Whoops. Let's go drop this stuff off. I think I can get this bot network to take this stuff away from me. We've still got a trash system here. Yeah, we're literally just putting the entire logistic network into this. So I don't have to go very far, at least. That's good, because the bots need to come back with me. Uh, where's our new build? Here we go. Alright, so this absolutely does not connect up here. These are outputs. Uh, the ones in the middle, I didn't have to rotate. This one is shift R. And I think that's it. Just looking at all the outputs. Looks like that's all correct now. Alright, so we move the spiders down just a few tiles. We build these pipes. Sulfuric acid finds its way to here and to here. Same thing on the other side. And because the rate for sulfuric acid is so low, uh, we probably don't even need a single pump anywhere, especially since it's coming in from both sides. So it's actually 30-something sulfuric acid per second on each side. 34.56. Uh, if this one is getting all of the sulfuric acid that it needs, then we know that there isn't a throughput issue with that. Okay, so we finally got that much working. Uh, let's send our construction spiders back to the mall. And we will... Make sure we don't make the same... We did make the same mistake here already. Um... Oh, there's a pump missing here. But this one... Oh, I see. Alright, pump that back there. Pump that back there. And maybe... So the two in the middle should return sulfuric acid to where it should be. Once it's sufficiently empty, we'll disconnect those pipe networks. It's looks, it looks like it's already there, except for what's in these pumps. Let's not forget to turn these ones around. Yeah, there's just a little bit left to squeeze back up here. And then, I guess we can get rid of this, get rid of that. Is this empty? Not really. Is my personal inventory fixed yet? Not really. Not even... Eh, we're getting there. Decon spiders down to here, please. Cool. And 
construction spider still going for a walk. Alright, are we just about done pumping this acid? Close enough, I think. Sulfuric acid be gone. And mark all that for deconstruction. Not even going to worry about the tiny amount of sulfuric acid that we're going to lose depending on the order of deconstruction here. And then this is probably going to look exactly the same. Yes. And this one goes down here. I mean, there we go. And down the bottom that should line up exactly the same way. And we didn't rotate any of these, did we? Just sort of keeping my eyes over one spot to check all the inputs or outputs. There we go. All right, construction spiders have arrived. They should be ready to go back pretty much immediately. Uh, it doesn't... I don't know if they have the prod modules to support this, but I should have a handful, at least. Let's send them back... Uh, up here? And hopefully that's all the Cryonite Slush will ever need. How are we doing already, Slush? Uh, yeah, that's a pretty dramatic increase. We're already doing about 69k per minute. Nice. Which is uh it's about half. About half of what it would take to run these four blocks at full speed continuously, which I doubt that's what we're gonna need. One thing I'd definitely like to see uh, added, and stop me if it's already been done uh, for space exploration, is bigger, more powerful machines uh, that we can use on land. With productivity modules. So we can have really high throughput without much of a UPS impact. These little 3x3 three three machines with only 3 modules aren't cutting it. That's what's nice about K2 plus SE. Yeah, I think uh, I think a lot is pointing me towards K2 plus SE for the next run. Not just because I want to do something a bit more different, uh, so it's more interesting for people to watch, but also stuff like that. You get the advanced K2 machines to use in the late game. Yeah, I really liked the look of the giant roboports as well, for example. Um, I think I'd like to add uh, that mod that gives you more and bigger spiders as well. Because at this stage of the game, I mean, when especially this stage of the game, when this is my personal uh, power armor setup in my thruster suit Mark IV, 16 by 16, 
And this, this sad little thing is what fits in our giant robot spiders. Uh, it feels a little bit weird, to be honest. We can't quite look at both of them at the same time, but yeah, this takes up, well, it's 16 by 16. Um, I don't know if this scale is exactly the same when we look at it, but this basically takes up most of the middle of the screen, and this is just kind of here. Spiders have arrived. Rod modules, we might actually run out. SE personal equipment size is just really big. I'm sure it is. I mean, I would call this really big. Because we're, we're really wanting for nothing um, with this setup. And we actually are missing some prod modules. How many are we missing? 169? Okay, that's like three times more than the worst case that I had in mind. Uh, how many do we have? Like zero up here, right? No, we've got 649. How did that happen? Wait, what? If that's the... If we've got 649 prods up here, then why didn't the module box auto-deliver them? Oh, that probably includes more prod modules than I should have requested in these uh, ships over here. Yeah, let's... Hmm... Let's maybe bump that down a little bit, just for the moment, at least. We can go one stack of prods that we normally carry in these things. And unfortunately, bots won't take from requester chests, I mean buffer chests, to put into other buffer chests. So I need to put this here. And we're just going to go tier 6 modules. It's also because of jetpacks and uplink, it's less necessary to have more personal equipment. Yeah, that's somewhat true. Although, um, just because of the way you have to accelerate with the jetpack, uh, with the UPS as low as it is, I like the ridiculous infinite acceleration of exoskeleton legs. This, the infinite acceleration that is so common in video games would literally destroy the universe the moment it happened, but apparently we're fine. There goes some cryonate slush. Fantastic. I could even... Nah, I'm sure this is fine. Also in SE, personal fusion reactors are super late game tech. Yeah, there's too much in S. There's too much quality of life in SE that is way too deep in the uh, research trees, if you ask me. Uh, and in vanilla, it's the same tech as Power Armor Mark II, yes. I mean, at least you get, like, weaker fusion reactor type things uh, relatively early. Um, the amount of time between getting portable RTG Mark II and portable fusion reactor, which is just 50% better, I, I, it's, I, I couldn't be excited about the portable fusion reactor, to be honest. I could barely be bothered to get it made when it was unlocked. Alright, um, I completely forgot when I summoned the... Oh, it's not here yet. Uh... 
Uh, let's see. Module box. It is getting filled up. It's almost ready to launch. Um, I don't know how severe the number of requests are over here for prod modules. Uh, but I don't want them all whisked away um, before we're ready. And it looks like we're stuck on antimatter stream again. Which is not surprising because we're, we're currently trying to fix the bottleneck of cryonite slush, which we weren't using before with our thermofluid builds. Maybe it would actually be more like UPS friendly if we just went for the hypercooler recipes that don't use cryonite slush. It's like three or four times as fast, depending on the recipe, but we need to build so much stuff to support it. Unless we want to skip out on the productivity bonus. Um, we could use biochemical facilities for the recipe, which are ridiculously fast. Well, they're only four times faster, actually. Although I think they have a lot more module slots in them. And since we can't get productivity bonuses, we'll definitely be cramming those full of speed modules. Cryonite is so easy to get, it's practically free. Sulfuric acid, less so, but we only need uh, one sulfuric acid for ten cryonite slush. And... It's actually one cryonite slush for ten recipes of this. So one sulfuric acid lets us turn 150 cold thermofluid into 100, negative 273 degree thermofluid. Yeah, at scale that does seem kind of wasteful, not to have the prod bonus. Oh, did I not turn these around? There we go. Alright, shouldn't be long. Maybe I should launch this early, after all. So what's our rate again? Well, it's going to be... It's almost enough to keep up with all four of those blocks up there. Alright, we've got our prod modules. 500 of them. Very cool. Maybe I should make this a requester chest. Well, no, but then we can't output it unless I use, like, a long arm inserter. That could work. I could make this a requester chest. Hmm. Except then it would have to, like, go into a steel chest or something until the ship leaves, and then we put it into... Yeah, yeah, no. Nah. Hello, each and every one. Hughes Mike, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, where are we? Did I miss anything in chat? I don't think so. SC personal equipment. Oh, wait. I scrolled too much. Where am I? Personal fusion reactor, super light game tech. 0.6 is even worse than 0.5. For request a chest, you need to go to other planets first. That is ridiculous. That, that sounds like a joke, honestly. Like, you're pulling my leg. You're having a fucking giggle. The speed of pumps is still so crazy in comparison to inserter loading, especially with the steel pipes from K2. Oh yeah. 
used to have a three pump set uh, set up per train. The animation of the pump moving was literally slower than the actual loading. I'm not sure if I follow. Did we get our spiders here? Uh, yes, yes we did. Alright. That should be that. I'm not seeing Cryonite. Wait, why am I not seeing Cryonite? What? Cryonite. Uh oh. Did my hubris about how easy it is to keep up with Cryonite finally catch up with me? Uh, I think we've never even made a ship to move Cryonite. It's all just cannoned from this moon. It's a pretty big moon. It's almost 4,000. I think it's almost as big as a moon can be. We've only got eight. All right, we're having some kind of issue with the delivery cannon capsules. Uh, should we set up a ship for this? No, I think this is going to be enough. We just need... I mean, we could easily add more drills as well, but we need to figure out why there's no explosives here. I'm pretty sure explosives are saturated. They are. So... It was Hagen, wasn't it? Yeah, Hagen. Why does Hagen have no explosives? Because this block has no delivery cannon capsules. Because this block doesn't have iridium plate. Even though it's got a request priority of a thousand. Uh, what happened to iridite? Didn't we have iridite totally saturated? It sure looks like we do. Where are we processing? It's the Omni Smelters. Uh, what about here? Is this working? It is not. Iridite, iridium powder is actually completely saturated. That's why this quote-unquote isn't working. It's actually backed up. It's actually fine. So why on earth? 25k iridium ingots. Uh, don't iridium ingots only stack to 20? Uh, 25,000 over 20. Uh, is this many stacks? Which is 7.81 train loads. Why do we have 7.81 train loads of iridium ingots here? With no... Why are we not getting Iridium ingots delivered here? There's no shortage of trains. Wait, we have Iridium ingots here. What? Oh, it's Iridium plate specifically that we don't have here, not ingots. Uh, we are requesting plate, so where do we make plate? I think we've got... You're joking. Oh no. I think I just switched this off planning to replace it and forgot about it. Oh no, that's embarrassing. Uh... It's fine. It's fine, don't worry about it. So we'll just switch that back on for now. Uh, as soon as this build is done, which it looks like it is... Okay, so we're gonna build a new block uh, probably nice and close to most of the Omni Smelters. So right about here. Bonk indeed. I deserved that. Uh, we're going to build a new block for dealing with Iridium Ingot to Plate and Girders. 
Uh, and we're going to get rid of this mess that has way more machines than we are going to need with the better beacons. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised that that was the problem. Alright, let's get rid of all of this. And I'll head over... Where's my spider? I'll head back to the mall for a second. How does this game run when you're not streaming? Uh, about the same, honestly. When I was using... What is it? Slobs? Streamlabs OBS? Uh, it actually had a pretty significant impact on UPS. Um, but I can even shrink or turn off the uh, preview window, like preview video with this. And I get, I think I get a little bit of speed back from that, but o OBS seems to be a lot more efficient. It's kind of nuts to me that months later you're still playing the same mod and you're not even done with the tech tree. Yeah, it's very big. And I'm not trying to rush through it or anything. So you're not using OBS now? I'm using OBS as opposed to Streamlabs OBS. Uh, Streamlabs OBS... Hmm, I, uh, I don't exactly want to call it more user-friendly because it's not like OBS isn't user-friendly. You're just able to do more stuff with OBS, um, with a smaller, uh, like, CPU or whatever footprint. But, yeah. I mean, Streamlabs OBS is fine for, like, getting started, I guess. There's actually a surprising amount of stuff moving to OBS where you can just use the exact same stuff. So it's not even that big of a learning curve. Kappa Beast, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's clean up these old... Roboport things that I was using just to clear out the old blocks. Factorio is mostly single-threaded, so it can only take over one core of your CPU. So other stuff on your computer can just use other cores. Will it actually just use the other cores, though? Oh. Oh, we're missing some prods here. I didn't even know this. Uh, Maybe I'll get construction spiders to swing back here first. It's only a handful. They probably won't run out. Didn't they update belts to be multi-threaded? Uh, I don't know. I think so, hence why I said mostly. Okay. Whatever the case, Factorio is pretty impressive in terms of optimization to begin with. It is wild to think just how much stuff is happening simultaneously in this save. Alright, so first we're doing ingot to plate, and then plate to girder, and we want both outputs. But we want to do this with better beacons. And both of these just happen in our plain old-fashioned 3x3 three three, uh, assembly machines. We're going for 7 speed and the rest efficiency and prod modules here. Wait, I just realized there's one less prod module in each of these machines. 
Uh, it's possible we're wasting a slot that could be speed and this would still be like minus 40% or something. Uh, we'll head back there and check that a little bit later. It's not even moving right now, so no need to trouble ourselves with that. We got our modules up here. Fantastic. Maybe I should use more speed modules and not worry about efficiency. If we can just make more energy beam power plants, uh, maybe it's better overall UPS wise if we don't bother with the efficiency modules. Uh, anyway, let's first do some calculations here. If we were to... How much usually fits under one of these? Without doing the squiggly belt... Uh, 36 times 2 is, what, 72? A hundred and forty-three, that is more than three belts of iridium plate per second. Uh, we'll have one, two, three, four belts for output. Oh, we've actually got enough rods for this at least. If I bring it in a little bit closer with a squiggly output belt, uh, we will not be able to fit any more machines, regardless. So, not much point in doing that. So let's see, one of these columns uh, only requires slightly more than half a belt of iridium plate. I don't think we're going to... Oh wait, no, the input is actually really slow. It's only the output we have to worry about. Uh, and down here I would like to do... Uh, what's the word? Girders. I'll just confirm that our ratio for this is correct. That's actually minus 40%. Hmm. I could I could live with that. Why is this the reverse of what we did here? Eight speeds and the rest efficient. Uh we've run out of prods, but I can make this one girders. so that we can calculate. Alright, so 72 of these. We would consume 432 iridium plate per second. Yeah, I probably should have remembered that, considering we've got mostly iridium plate up here, and then a few girders. Uh, so what we did here was the input belt for ingots goes down here, and then where that stops, the output belt for girders begins, and I think that's pretty sensible. We'll probably do the same thing. Also, how fast are these individually? 2.34 per second. We could use long arm inserters for output if we want to. Why don't we build half of this, and we can maybe find it a little bit easier to check the ratios. Cool. Alright. 
right, so something like this, maybe. That is maybe a bit too much. Well, it depends on the rate we want. Girders are in relatively low demand. Um, what kind of ratio did we go for here? That's probably pretty good. So we are... Net positive... About a quarter of the iridium plate that we're getting. That seems fine to me. This is net positive like half of the iridium plate that we're getting. Maybe that would be okay too. Especially since we'd be getting over a hundred heavy girders per second. Maybe we should aim for 90 per second heavy girders. So we can easily output that on two belts. 84. I could probably live with that. What What's the output that we had from this block? This seems to be enough. Well, I mean, it, it's clearly an... I was going to say it's clearly enough because girders were saturated this whole time. Oh, that's actually four belts of girders, so it's kind of hard to know. How much have we been consuming before things crashed? Over... let's... I wish I could check like the last 25 hours. Okay, 144, 405 per minute over the last 250 hours. But that kind of changed dramatically. This is probably when we were using Iridium pile drivers or something. Alright, if we can get like 150 girders per minute, that's probably... Oh. Did I misread the stats? A hundred and forty four per minute. There's no K in there. A hundred and eleven per minute. And we only produced twenty six point five per minute over the last ten hours. So we had a reserve that we were eating up. Yeah, uh, I, I don't think we need that many girders. So this ratio might be totally fine. That is a bit less than a belt. Well, when we double it, it's a bit less than two belts. About... I can't get it to just go over two belts. Unfortunate. How high is your iridium plate consumption? Uh, kind of high. 788 per minute over the last uh, 10 hours. 3k per minute over the last 50. Okay, let's aim... Let, let's just make sure we get a lot per minute. 8k? Uh, okay, I think... Like, we'll lay this out as if we're gonna double it and double it. But I think just this is probably gonna be fine. So, maybe even, maybe even just this, honestly. 
Way less than a belt of ingots in, less than a belt of heavy girders out. A uh, hundred iridium plate per second is more than two belts. That's a little bit of a nuisance. Maybe like this. 93. 88.9. And 46. Which means if this is blocked by a 45 belt, we'll actually get... Oh, that's the whole... That's not the net rate. Whoops. Uh, let's just do this. I, I would rather have too much than not enough. So we just need half a belt of ingots. Alright, so request a station. Oh, we've already got it here. Uh, ingot. We need... Lots of it. 20 times 160 times, let's say, 6 trains. 19,000. we got Requester. And I'll turn that on ahead of time. Make sure these are all up to date. Okay. So we're going to have input here. Oh wait, I forgot to check. 140, that is slightly more than three belts. That's the only problem. We're gonna have... like one, two belts of output? Or this could be... Which one should be input, which one should be output? Well, either way, one of the outsides is going to be... I think we should use more horizontal space. I was going to say either way, one of the outputs is going to be a... Well, the one on the outside is going to be like a half belt, this is going to be a full belt. That's actually like half of what we need. Um... So we need extra belts for output. For redeem plate. Now here's a build that I didn't think would have any challenges. And yet here we are. If we're going to have two belts for output here, we're going to need a bunch of splitters um, to make sure that we use both sides of the belt. What's the rate for this individually? 2.3 per second. Okay. Print, snap to grid relative, and go. Uh, is this a problem? No, it's not. Fantastic. Uh, 
that actually does remove the splitters. Alternatively, instead of having as many splitters as this, we could actually have long arm inserters for half of these. They should be able to keep up with 2.34 per second. Yeah. Okay. Copy this, flip it. Here's our ingots. I imagine by now we've got some plate flowing. Fantastic. Oh, there's probably a bunch of trains trying to deliver ingots. I should probably hurry up and give it some chests. Um, but do we want it to be on this side or that side? It's going to be quite slow. And we might want to use a lot of space here. So let's put it up on this side. Connect that to LTM. Add some filter inserters. Ingots. Just slightly more than half a, than one belt. Wait, no, I already figured this out. If this is one belt, half of them go to this half, half of them go to this half. That should be fine. Uh, on this side, though, it's gonna have to be in pairs. How many do we have? 20, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, somewhere or other we need to put these on the opposite side of the belt and we can actually just do these the same way. Just checked my point six save. Request a chest of being behind utility signs, which required crinite rods, but you get four, three medium size and one big size. Request a chest as a present after launching your first rocket. How nice. Quite painful coming from nor normal Factorio. Yeah, definitely. All right, so that'll be one whole belt coming in. Uh, this stuff we'll use way, way, way less and the ingots that we've got coming in. Uh, these are just going to be straightforward. Oh, it's actually 4.68 per second per machine, so we'll do stack inserters for the outputs, and 6 in as well. Okay. Uh, I wonder if we even need more than one stack inserter for input, but I think it's probably okay. Probably. And then... 
depending on what we're consuming, we've got like three belts of iridium plate and uh, like a belt and a half. Yeah, less than a belt and a half of heavy girders. Okay. So if we're going to potentially double this one day, which I'm sure we won't, but let's pretend we will. Um, that would be six belts. Six belts of iridium plate and like three. Or... Wait, this looks wrong. Uh, three for heavy girders. That's kind of tricky. That's kind of really tricky if we were going to do the, uh, the belt to train inputs there. Maybe I'll even not worry about it unless and until the day comes where we need more than this. We really need to get this working again. Uh, I might... I might just put girders over here. Or maybe girders here would be easier. Probably not. If girders were to go here, ish, these would have to escape out this way. Yeah, no. Why don't we put this down here? And we'll do the ingots. We need like a 3 to 4 balancer. I guess we'll just throw it into a 4 to 4. Oh, do we even have room on this side? One. Two. Three, four? One, wait, one, two, three. Hmm. Two, three, four? Uh oh. Uh, hmm. Three, I mean, two. One, two, three, and four. Or even four. It's a little awkward, but it checks out. The girders will take some of that six belts of plate to work as well. Yeah, most of the time. Or oh, some of the time. Alright, so... This goes... Here. That doesn't look right. And this can go here, it goes there, wait what, 
There we go. That's not quite right either. I guess we can just do this. No, we can't. Uh, I think I need to stretch these out a little bit. Kind of a weird setup, but it'll work. And since we've got... We don't have four belts of input here, so we can probably just use a regular balanced loader with stack inserters. Uh, let's see... Each divided by 24 chests, negative, gives us the negative average. Positive value for what's in the chest comes from the red wire. And then if we check that everything is less than or equal to zero. It means we have to be at or below the average to pick something up. And then stackies go burr. This can go here. And this goes here, I suppose. Looks kind of weird. Alright, but this is Iridium Plate. Provider. And this one is going to be a lot more straightforward. Since it's just a couple of belts. This belt isn't going to be oversaturated, is it? No. Uh, we just put those through a splitter. It actually lines up already. Oh wait, we want to avoid these undergrounds. can just put that through there. And then splitter. Balanced loader again. I don't think we need stack inserters. In fact, I'm sure we don't if it's less than two belts. Arithmetic. Stack inserters. A passen uh, passion sausage. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It's a cause why I cheated and made mod with early game 5 slot request a chest. Well, those bots are kind of slow. Take your whip and give them a little push. They're actually already uh, bot speed. We're actually at worker robot speed 10. Believe it or not. Alright, uh, so this is also going to be each divided by negative 24 output each. Positive value comes from the red wire for the local chest. 
the sum of that will be less than zero if it is at or below average. Well, it's less than zero if it's below average. Uh, and that's our condition to pick up. And this is uh, Gerda. Gerda provider. The fact that I had to click both of those in uh, tells me that I didn't put in the usual. Ride step threshold, one train load. Many trains are allowed. Cool. Oh, I think we are ready. Can I stop jumping back and forth to the wrong spot there? There we go. Uh, so we just need our ingots to be split between those two belts. Hey, Whiskers. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, let's just double check again. We need less than one belt of this stuff, right? Exactly half a belt of uh, Viridium Ingot. So I think we can just go for the laziest of unloaders. Uh, maybe with, not with the yellow inserters, but we'll see. And we'll bring that down here. I was thinking about cheating, but I went, want to give this new way of playing a try. Been doing the same thing every time, so a nice change of pace. Yeah, definitely. Oh, we missed this one bit of belt. There we go. Oh, some of them swung twice. Oh, they actually kind of have to be yellow for this to work properly. Didn't even realize that. And now they're kind of out of sync. Oh no. What if I do this? Well, this one's kind of... There we go. And swing. Beautiful. Um, but that will be more than half a belt, right? I'm pretty sure that's more than half a belt. Yes. Cool. Ingots are already reaching the end over this side. I wonder why... Oh, because there's twice as much stuff on this side. That's why it hasn't saturated... come near saturating this side yet. Uh, it looks like our stack inserters can keep up with this just fine. I guess I shouldn't be surprised. And... We're not having any trouble outputting to the belt. We are getting some issues with inserters down the end here. Not, not putting Iridium plate. Uh, I know we've got a bit more than what fits on the belt, but I think we're seeing a bit more of that problem than we necessarily would. So let's try this. That looks close enough to me. Actually, not quite. I want this belt saturated. Yeah, that looks that looks okay. 
All right, let's look at our graph. Line go up. Fantastic. And line really go up since we remembered to switch that thing back on. Wow. All right. Uh, even if we want to get rid of this one, I'll leave it running for a while, since we're playing catch up again. Do we already have Iridium Plate delivered here? Yes, we do. Fantastic. You connected the ingot belt to the girder section? I think I did at one point, yep. Blue belts and level 3 assemblers are also quite late in SE.6. Really interesting how SE shuffles the tech and gives a new challenge by forcing you to handle off-world logistics to get quality of life you are used to. Okay. Uh, so what are, what other little crises have we accidentally created? Uh, this is supposed to be Crynite Slush, right? Yep. Slush. And that goes there. This is unused, I think. Actually, I bet this was going to be Crynite Slush, now that I think about it. It's fine. We are very close to launching our ship. 24,500. 24,444. We actually... Oh, it's 50 short, not like 5 short. Twenty-five to go. Is this a bit too greedy? Like waiting too long to launch it? The greedier we are, the more fuel efficient this is. But pumping gets slower and slower as the ship gets more full. Or the fluid containers, to be precise. I want to make absolutely sure this is getting where it needs to. Because this is one of our critical bottlenecks for our spaceships. Well, for kind of everything at this point, since we moved, uh, we moved thermofluid to always using cryonite slush. Or the top two, the coldest thermofluids. Or the coldest temperatures of thermofluid, I suppose. And go. Fantastic. Very nice. Alright, that will do. Let's get our decon spiders to continue removing this old stuff. And our UPS crept all the way back to 22, so we must be doing something right. Princess Tsumi, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, we're already getting kind of close to clearing out this wall. It definitely helps when we've got a trash recycling system... Uh, so that everything that ends up in these spiders' uh, logistic trash slots, the bots will take down to this station right here. So we don't have to send these spiders back and forth. Basically, we're just requesting the entire logistic network to be delivered to this requested chest. And then we put it into a chest that we can read contents of. Uh, we'll 
definitely want to make sure we leave a little bit of this here so that it can clean itself up until there's hardly anything left and the, and the spiders can do the rest. What is this spider? Oh, this is Frank. Where is the remote for Frank? There we go. Let's send you back to the mall. I'll have that one spare construction spider ready. Wait, don't walk through the spaceships though, please. Frank, indeed. Chen, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, we have a train load of plate here, but I forgot to tell LTN what we've got. Oh, that is Frank, yes. Zavoxifol, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Girders are being picked up. Alright, I wonder how long it'll be before we get that last burst of uh, tier 3. We are lacking Deep Space Science Pack 1 and nothing else effectively for the moment. Deep Space Science Pack 1 is, is lacking Naquium Plate. It's always just one form or, of an one form or another of missing Naquatite. Hello, doing good? You? Yeah, not too bad. Not too bad. I could take this time to uh, put in the Arcosphere redesign as well. Trains are on their way. Fantastic. And we're getting close to a second train load of Iridium Plate as well. All right, spiders. Uh, what, what am I doing? Spiders back to the mall. Speaking of the mall, oh wait, 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 wait. Can you please get rid of this old stuff? Those don't need to be regular signals. Whoa, 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 whoa. That looked kind of freaky. And this as well, please. And I guess I could trim that Robo network all the way back bit by bit by myself. Oh yeah, I was going to visit um, our new Cryonite slush block. And maybe add in one more speed module to each of these beacons. Since we've only got three prods, uh, we could probably keep the power consumption quite low. And still go a bit faster. We're still short on cryonite though. Are we getting cryonite uh, core fragments back? It looks like we should be. Yes, yes we are. So let's check our rate. Oh, this was done before... Wait, what? Oh, this is tier 3 modules. That's why this block is so big. Uh, we can handle... 160 core fragments per second. I very much doubt we're getting that. Pretty sure this is the only place we get cryonite. Uh, we're only getting 46 core fragments per second. 
think it's about time we paid this a visit. And instead of expanding this solar power until the end of time, when we only get 155 kilowatts per panel, uh, why don't we add a... Did we empty that? Yeah, we're good enough. Actually, that's double the prod modules that should be here. Oh, the prod modules are coming from here as well. Okay, let's turn that into a steel chest temporarily. Dub. Do we not have a steel chest? Surely we have a steel chest. We do not have a steel chest. Uh, okay, this is now a requester chest. There we go. Okay, I want to keep this one handy because that's going to Foenestra. We still don't have any antimatter canisters here, even though we definitely have them here. That's how 40 is the threshold. This has to be full before it'll deliver. That won't do. Where are we going? Oh yeah, that's right. Speed... Module, negative 80% still, plus 120%, okay. So we're looking at eight speed modules. We still get minus 80%. And now our rate is uh, 2.24k per second, crinite slush, whoops. Uh, which is almost enough. Wait, 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 where is it? Crinite slush uh, times four. I was looking at the wrong thing. Yeah, that is actually enough to keep up with all four of these blocks going full speed on all of these hypercoolers. Fantastic. That means we could get rid of this old build uh, when we feel like it. But currently we need to get Cryonite itself to come back to us. I'm going to ride the module box back up. And... I was thinking of personally going to Hagen, but is that really necessary? Yeah, it will make it a bit easier to tidy this up. We can get rid of this old infrastructure up here, since we don't need to make uh, liquid rocket fuel on Hagen anymore. Which means we can trim this down to a much smaller size. Um, I want to send a construction ship to Calidus Orbit. That's, what, uh, uh, that's right, I was emptying these modules. There we go. Alright. Get rid of that. Fix that. Calidus Orbit. Uh, so we're going to make sure we have another energy beam transmitter and the solar panels to... Oh, we've already got one here. Whoops. And we've actually got tons of scaffolding and solar panels. Uh, maybe not tons of solar panels. Uh, but we definitely need more power. So we're going to beam some power to... Whoops. Whoops, whoops, whoops. We're going to beam some power to Hagen, so we've got effectively unlimited electricity here. Um, to make the most of coal mining on this planet. I may or may not want to replace the delivery cannon system. I think it can probably stay because 
we're only going to get so much core mining out of a 4,000 or 3,900 radius uh, moon. So we can probably keep up with that with capsules relatively easily. Maybe I'm just being lazy. What have we got candidate-wise for cryonite if we really want... Uh, if we really need more? That's iron. We marked this one as priority 20. 9,600 radius. Zero biters. It's not waterless. It is a little bit far away actually. 111,000 delta V from Nalvis. I don't think we need that big of a radius, um, necessarily. I wish we could sort by delta V from Nalvis, though. Let's look at, like, the medium sizes. That's actually really, really close. 4.1k... Orbit of Electra. We've, we already set up stuff in Electra. Yeah, here it is. Picard. Uh, threat 100%. Uh, it took us a long time to clear Electra of Biters. I mean, Irene, which is the same radius. We, we'd have a bit more powerful beaming, because it's a bit closer. But still... Uh, I don't suppose there's anything in Vazanus for Cryonite? That would be very convenient. There is, but it's kind of small. Mm. I think at this point we're better off just doing a better job of exploiting Hagen. Alright, let's get over there. This orbit... actually, let me just do this. And I'll ride the construction ship over to Hagen, or a construction ship. I think we should probably start here some more solar panels. We're going to make sure we leave room for some superchargers. So we can see exactly where our ship needs to anchor now. It's almost here. Very nice. Also very nice, we are in orbit. Let's go jump in the other construction ship. And I might ride this thing straight to Foenestra after this as well. Did we get any fuel for the antimatter reactors yet? Yes, we did. Alright, uh, so this is going to Hagen. So are these prod modules, I guess. I hope we won't have to bother reconfiguring... Uh... Cannons here. We might. We're very much playing catch. Oh, we don't have a beacon here? We do. It's just on tier 3 modules. Yeah, just putting modules here is going to help as well, I think. But I think we're actually bottlenecked on explosives being sent here right now. 
Uh, we might even have to go for some of the more aggressive... This one's not configured. We could go just double explosive cannon sent to Hagen. We might not need to bother with the pulse system. I don't think it, yeah, I don't think Hagen's going to get so fast that we need to bother with what we had to do on Via Terra and the other place where it sends a pulse every little while, like 30 seconds or something, uh, whenever it doesn't have resources here. So that we don't over deliver it, but we can also go very fast with multiple cannons for one resource. Well, more than two, even. It's our ETA. One minute forty. Fantastic. Uh, the bots are fleeing. I don't recall telling them to. We didn't destroy this robot network, so why... Oh. Oh, you poor things. I think we'd better get our decon spiders up there. But we'll wait till this little... Uh, we've only got seven logistic parts. <laughs> Let's move these guys much, much, much closer to this requester chest. And I'll use picket dollies to bring this storage chest closer as well. That's going to get done quite a bit faster. Uh, we still have bots fleeing the scene. This is kind of weird. Hmm. We'll check back here and see if things have stopped moving, and then we'll deconstruct it. Also, this. Also, also, I wonder if uh, Combinator, 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 Power Switch. I'm curious as to oh. Yeah, I think the stuff that would make that work was already moved. I was going to say, if we remove this all at once, do we see a little blip of UPS come back? So this has a latch circuit um, for every little while to control uh, power to most of the lasers. We can at least mark that for deconstruction ahead of time anyway. Let's also get the bots to rid us of walls. That's probably going to take a minute. But there are quite a few bots in this block. Actually, not as many as I thought. Only 130 construction bots. Okay. 27 seconds until we reach our destination. Uh, what else are we doing right now? We could send this thing out for... 
more interstellar travel data. Except it's very, 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 very easy uh, for the interstellar travel data to keep up with the other data cards. Eh, yeah, why not? It's a bit of antimatter stream, some water, and blank data cards. Let's go. Oh, right, I forgot. Wait, what's the heat? 10,000 degrees. Okay. This thing has been sitting here for 177,000 ticks, because I forgot about it. Solar power on an interstellar travel data ship? Yeah, it just mitigates the wasted power while we're still in the solar system. What does the blue assembler do than the classic assembler? Oh, the crafting combinator? This lets us set recipes on machines with a circuit condition. So here, for example, I've got a system that builds all sorts of things. Um, we've got a list of stuff that we want versus what we actually have. These are some prerequisite conditions. Don't worry about that for now. Uh, it also goes through a little timer so we don't constantly change recipes. Uh, and then we pick one signal out of the list of signals for each of them. Then we've got, this is also part of the same mod, Recipe Combinator outputs a signal based on what this recipe requires. That goes into a set request, request a chest, and into the machine. And we've got common things in these chests here, and like negative a million signal for each of those going to the requester chest, so that we don't have to have the bots bring everything. So if I... Let's, how many... let's see. What can we use as an example here? Uh, fine, let's just pretend I want more inserters. We've got 472 right now. If I bump this up to 473, uh, the next time this timer goes to zero, which is in a minute, uh, about 20 seconds actually, uh, it's going to put everything that we have less than the target of in the robot network uh, into... Well, the first six recipes are going to go into these machines. Let me, let me just force it. We're going to reset the timer. And... There it is. And I'll just change this thing back. It'll make some inserters until the timer hits it again. Not that building you say it's too advanced? The automation building. What do you mean by that? The assembling machine 2, the color blue. Assembling machine 2? Let me scroll up a second. What does the blue assembler do than the classic assembler? Uh, it's faster. It can also take fluid input. Is this the one you were talking about? Oh, we're here. Let's let's anchor. Yes. Okay. Uh. So I want to put down a modern power plant. Right about here, I suppose. Let's put it here. And we need... Wait, did we not anchor here yet? Oh no, they anchored together. Whoops. All right, please launch again. Ink. 
Marker down here. Put down a supercharger. Oh, we're not going to be able to do it, are we? Oh, no. Uh, temporarily remove these. There we go. Hey, Velduck. Good to see you again. Well, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And... Let's get started with that. We'll also need some more superchargers over this way. Probably not that last one, but it's fine. Things you can put in your machines to increase speed, productivity, or decrease energy. Oh, modules? Yes. Yes, indeed. Sand Wraith. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And uh, also, B. Good to see you again. Well, Assembly 3s are also faster. The best thing about them is the four module slots. Yes. All right, uh, so we need some energy beamed over here. We don't have the power for it at the moment, though. I could just get rid of the dimensional anchor. That's 60 gigawatts that's going to waste. It just doesn't seem to do anything right now. It just sits there pretending that it doesn't have enough power. Hey, Miko. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Yeah, I'm kind of tempted to just yank it, to be honest. What is that anchor supposed to even do? It's a mystery. Uses a star's gravity well as a stabilizing point for a spatial anomaly. We can only build it at a star. It uses 60 gigawatts. Uh, we got the 60 gigawatts, but if we point at it, it says low power and the electricity, uh, like the charge, just keeps giving up. It anchors dimensions, yes. I'm wondering if it has something to do with the giant wedding ring. Have you tried asking in the Discord? Uh, I'm trying to figure it out without looking outside of the game itself. It seems like you should be able to do that. But maybe not. Yeah, that's all it says. Whatever the case, the answer will be 42. Like the number of Naqu Naquium processors that go into a deep supercomputer. Uh, all right, so we need some pylon substation over here. And... Uh, I guess I could have added a block of solar panels by now if I didn't try and add both of these at the same time. Why don't we just... Remove tile ghosts. Head over here, please. I'd say take it down for now and free up the power. Yeah. I mean, I think we've been running it long enough that... It's not like we just have to run it for a while and then something happens, right? I could just move... oh. 
could move it out of range. And then we've got lots of power to spare right now. Literally 60 gigawatts. Uh, this will be 11. And if we send that to Hagen. We get 52.6%. So a bit over 5 gigawatts, which is actually enough to run this thing at full power. It, it's like 20%, it's 25% more than enough to run this at full power, actually. Um, why don't we just make it 8 Not that I think we'll ever get close to using all 4 gigawatts here. Although, on the other hand, uh, it would be good if we could speed things up a bit in the meantime. While it warms up, because it has to get all the way to 5000 degrees before it'll work. That's gonna... You know what, let's just deconstruct this, whatever. Alright. I will add more solar panels while I'm here, though. There we go. And I don't think I need to pay attention to this area for a while. So I will actually queue up lots of this stuff. Probably should have done this first though. Okay. We are already at 146 degrees though. Actually remove this now. Let's get rid of this old stuff. Uh, the old power poles. Yoink, 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 and furthermore, yoink. Wait, does my spider run faster than me, or... No. Not even close. I didn't think so. <laughs> Poor spider. This is busted. That is a bit of a distance. Let's mark all of these for deconstruction. I think I'm going to have to slow down to get the bots to come out though. And no trees or rocks, please. Okay. I think if I get the spider to do a zigzag, we can probably make sure we pick all that up. Oh, why is this all here? Okay. Bots need a rest, though. I probably should have added more drills already, though. Seems like we're not having trouble keeping up with the explosives now. Oh, this is saturated. Fantastic. Alright, so what's our actual rate? Kind of hard to say. Oh, these are actually charging up before they get enough cryonite. Oh, right. We're bottlenecked on power. Yeah, this is about to change dramatically. 
I, I think this is the only cryonite planet we're ever going to need, actually. Call it a hunch. The spice must flow, indeed. Use mic. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. It has to do with the Foenestra thing. I analyzed the source code. Oh. Yeah, that was my guess. Um, we need to get a very beefy power plant to Foenestra before we can run it. I either need to beam a frankly absurd amount of power because it's like 0.3 something percent or something like that um, when we try to beam energy there. Or we need to make a uh, antimatter reactor there. And a big one too, because we need 10 gigawatts to run the stupid thing. Uh, and I'm actually... Uh, we actually have to ship quite a lot of antimatter canisters there to keep it going. Because this is actually only 20 gigajoules. Um, as opposed to... 8 gigajoules. It's only 2.5 times more energy dense than uranium fuel cells. Which is kind of disappointing considering how much deeper into the tech tree it is. I think it was closer to 0 0.02. Yeah, whatever it was, it was... It was enough for even me to say, no, we're not making this many solar panels. Just to... Just to not have to bother with the logistics of giving it antimatter canisters. Okay, I'm hoping if I do a little zigzag, it will get the bots to come out and pick these up and it won't require my attention. And then we can do a trim. Uh, we should also get rid of this. Oh, that's a lot of iron that I'm going to have to pick up. Okay. One thing that's going to make a second playthrough a hell of a lot smoother, even if I do like K2 for instance and stuff's going to be significantly different, uh, is setting up outposts for example. Just the, just the experience, just the familiarity with what needs to be taken and what needs to be done is going to make for a much, much faster less error prone uh, much smoother ride looks like that is more than enough zigzagging alright, what's our heat at? it's already at 1200 degrees that's quite good considering we're only running double what we need Uh, for the maximum for that power plant. I thought Arco Link only worked on the same surface. You could use Arco Link storage to send the fuel cells over. Uh, Arco Link. We need. Deep Space Science Pack 4 be before we can use it. A container linked by extra dimensional space to other containers. The links of the container depend on the surface it is first placed on. That's a little bit vague. Storage size is only 10, but what do you want? It's a instant teleport. Or maybe it's like the chest has the same contents at both ends. Maybe not then, yeah. That would, uh... I don't know to what extent it would break the game. It depends how expensive they were. I know you need a... At least one Arcosphere. You, what? Whoa. Ten Arcospheres to make one of these. Yeah, that's, uh... That's an effort. 
10 naquim processors, 10 antimatter canisters, and we don't really care about the rest at that stage of the game. They ain't cheap. Yeah, I thought they were like one Arcosphere or something each. That is that is a significant impact on the Arcosphere supply. Speaking of which... Arcospheres are doing quite well. We're bottling, bottlenecked on Naquium to do everything over here. That's good. Alright, um, I guess I should send this thing on another journey. Um, let's say... Greater than one. Oh, and we've also got interstellar travel data here still. Okay. It's actually incredibly easy to keep up with interstellar travel data compared to some other cards in the same tier. But I still want to... Alright, let's force a... Let, let's force a launch here. I need to be paying attention when this ship gets back. Um, so that we can see exactly how far this timer gets. We also need to reset the timer um, when there's no ship. I don't want to need one more Combinator for this, but I think we have to. If everything equals zero... Oh wait, if everything not equal to zero, run the timer. And... Output T, input count. Am I going to use red wire? No. We need to check something from the green wire here. We don't receive any signal on the red wire, right? Uh, yeah, those are only the inputs. So we need the green wire to check if there's a ship here. Unless I... Oh wait, there's al there already is always a signal on the red wire, even though it is inputs. Because of the clamp ID stuff. So we can use that to say that yes, there is a ship. Uh, that's the wrong one. So... We take the input wire. No, wait, there's always a signal here. Whoops. Derp. Yeah, I think I have to add a combinator here. Feels like failure. Unless I change this to red wire, actually. That might be all it takes. So we go... Green wire from the ship to say if everything equals zero or not. And then green wire from the ship if, if the ship is detected, output 1T, 1T goes to here, and this thing uh, with the red wire becomes a memory cell. The T loops around, output T, input count, but it can receive from the green wire to check if there's a ship, which won't cross-contaminate or mess with anything here. And then, when timer is greater than some number, um, oh, I could set an alarm. We don't have any programmable speakers, though, do we? Be sure. Do we have any in the mall? 
speaker. Uh, should have done it this way. Yeah, we do. Hmm. All right, fine. We're going to request speakers here. What's our request threshold? One stack? I don't want to have to bring over one stack of programmable speakers. Mm. Maybe I should just try and keep an eye on it. Oh, we're here. Let's start... Wait, let's get the power supply working first. We need water as well. Don't tell me it's waterless. No, we're good. Uh, but how far do we have to go for water? Don't tell me this is it. Oh, no. Uh, we should have set up over here. Um... I, I think there's also water way down here. I vaguely recall. How big's the planet? 3.8k. We Okay, fine. We're going to scan it. Cross our fingers and hope that we happen to be really close to some water over here. Otherwise, I'm going to have to run pipes all the way from over here again, after all. And so much for trimming the surface. Rip. Uh, Dark Rail also. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright. How are our decon spiders? There's still things moving here. Why don't we get them to pick it up? And bring it over nice and close to the requester chest and the storage chests. Work, work, indeed. I'm not about to set up ice delivery here just to just to not run some pipe. Uh, maybe since. Since it's centered around here, maybe it would be quicker if I just explore this the old-fashioned way. Okay. Uh, how is Calidus Orbit looking? Let's get some more beaming. It's actually relatively close to finished. And where is... Hasn't left the solar system yet. Here it is. Nexus Prime. Just about to get started with the interstellar travel data. There it goes. Wait, are my headphones messed up, or is the audio kind of messed up? Uh, I don't want to say I hope it's your headphones, but I kind of do. Let me have a little echo listen here. Let me Fine. have a little echo listen here. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Let me Fine. have a little... Seem 
We... I thought we I thought I just found a mysterious structure there that I forgot to get from Hagen, but no, no such thing. Uh, yeah, we did not find water. Also, I forgot just how quickly I could look around like this. All right, I guess we're going all the way up here for water, and un unless I want to build the outpost from scratch again, we're going to have to. We're not going to be able to trim it smaller than this. Unfortunate. Alright, I guess we can... On the plus side, I do have 50... Uh, 15 length pipes on me. I'm sure we'll only need one pump, since the big uh, power plants act like condenser turbines. We don't go through nearly as much water as the traditional nuclear plant. And this is... Where's a good spot? How about here, I guess? Hmm. Up here? Perfect. Or at least as close as it's going to get. And we need some kind of input control for our water. doesn't happen to line up very well. Maybe it would be easier to go around the other end. Something like a fiver or a seven. Or a nine for that matter. Perfect. And then we can just put a pump here, connect it to this. Alright. Did we build this? Yes, we did. Uh, instead of running power all the way out here, I think it'll be fine if we just have a single power pole. And my bots are upset with me again. Maybe I should let them catch up. The equalizer somehow changed. Huh. Alright, what's our temperature? 4.9 thousand. And... Well, I guess it doesn't matter, there's no water there yet. But it's good to know that it'll be there before we even get the water down. In fact, we can go ahead and remove the excess power input. Alright. 
Let's add some extra solar panels. The bots are actually not catching up even with that zigzag. I think if I just do a straight line, the bots will probably place these as well. But I want to try to let them catch up. I guess that's not enough. There's too many legs on this spider for that. Let's just do this. And in fact, let's do this. I don't have to pay attention until I get over here. Look at something else. Deconstruction spiders are This is gonna take a while. Let's send them over here. We'll get rid of this. And then I'll bring them into the old main bus base to dump their stuff. How are we doing for Cryonite Slush? Uh, we're just refilling this one after it's delivered everything to Nalva's orbit. It does take a while to drain a ship once it gets up here. So these should have zero Cryonite Slush. Perfect. That one has a bit. Hmm. Hmm. Oh yeah, we don't have the Cryonite to support this. That's why we're still waiting on it. That's what we're trying to fix right now. We do have the same trickle of Cryonite that we had before. Um, but it had been stopped for a while. And we're also demanding a lot more of it at this stage. Looks like Iridium Plate is well and truly fixed. Uh, Cryonite, not so much. And Cryonite Slush is going to have just kind of a spike and then a... Oh, it's under floods, of course. Kind of one big spike and then nothing. Okay. Oh, we don't have any more long pipe. Oh. Okay. Uh, let's get our legs back in. Not lasers. Legs. Let's get our legs back in here. And remove the 15s, I guess. Oh, we've got some over here? Wait, do we have more? Where did these come from? Oh, the construction ship. Okay. How many do we have? 236. Uh, I dare say that's enough. Alright, let's go get them. And we'll place these again. What was that? 30? 26. Alright, cool. I forgot I didn't come here in just a little personal shuttle. I may as well pick up these old spiders as well. One 
once again we are missing... Oh, nothing. Oh, we're not making cryonite because we don't have power. Cool. Give to me... Give to me the pipe, please. Thank you. And as soon as... Oh, cool. I can do this now so I don't have to remember it. Uh, we're only going to want like 10,000 water in here. Because it gets turned into lots and lots of steam that gets stored here. Uh, that comes back eventually. So there's actually... Uh, so once you... There'll actually be more in here than it looks like, basically. Does the cryonite glow? That looks kind of weird. Kind of cool. Maybe I shouldn't be building on top of this stuff. Maybe it's like Tiberium. And go. Wait, we're still missing... Oh no, there's no corner piece. Do we have robot coverage? We do. Do we have water here? We do not. Oh, there's still a couple of pieces over there. The bots didn't build this. Okay. I see how it is. Let's just make the spider slow and then we should get that done this time. All right. Uh, Golksy, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, where is our... Oh, it's already almost... No, it is halfway to Oblong Loblada, because a lot of distance is covered in Calidus. Nice. Very good. Uh, we've just got a little bit... A little bit more pipe to go here. And then... There we go. And our power just skyrocketed. That little red line... Uh, that red line is the production from the high temp turbine generators. This is our solar panels. So we're already at double our maximum. Keeps flickering between like one gigawatt maximum and occasionally two. It can go to four. It just has to catch up with the water. Which is going to take a little while because of how... Oh! We're not getting more water because it's night time. Oh no. Well, that'll sort itself out. Uh, let's remove these old solar panels. Yeah, we still have enough power from the high temp turbine generators that the solar panels won't be needing to do anything anyway. If we want solar panels, we can put them close to the sun. As opposed to as far from the sun as they can get. If 
Fantastic. So look, what's our graph look like for Crinite Core Fragments? Already looks very, very nice. Um, I guess this is from one day to the next. Except now it's just going to stay up here all the time. And that's without me adding any drills, which I am going to do. Sun's coming up, which means we're getting more water. We're actually pumping in 380 per second already. It's not going to take that long before we have uh, 4 gigawatts that we can use here. Did you see the updated space exploration mod? Lots of changes? Yeah, I haven't looked at it directly, but I've been hearing a lot. Uh, very, very interesting. There's a lot of stuff that they're changing uh, that kind of makes it more annoying, to be honest. But on the other hand, there's space elevators, which is going to massively cut down on the chore of doing certain things. Early game was certainly changed, indeed. Also, if I didn't say so, Dardano, good to see you again. And Nucleo Mind. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Modules aren't a massive copper sink. Oh yeah, I think they removed... What was it? You don't even need green circuits for... Red circuits. Something like that, if I recall. They also require like two times for each tier as opposed to three times, right? I'm debating whether to start another one or try some other mud pack. It's a big decision because it's such a long playthrough. Alright, uh, do we have more drills just on this ship here, perhaps? Also, we don't need the power management. Uh, on these belts anymore. At all. Day, night cycle, what's that? Actually just run two games? I guess that's an option. Okay, uh, I guess it's time we can already trim surface. And it's pretty much exactly as bad as it was before. What the... Oh, that was our radar construction pylon on our spaceship. Yeah, we'll trim it after this leaves, not that it'll make a huge difference. But yeah, uh, doing a second, even if I do K2 and things are, certain things are significantly different, uh, being able to bear in mind what the higher tech stuff looks like uh, that we'll be upgrading to later, I can make better decisions like we could have built this right next to the water so that we could trim surface down to something really small when this is done. Although in the update we have... what is wrong here? Oh, I copy pasted that. Uh, in the update you have to put coal mining drills on specific places so we're probably still gonna have to ca uh, cover a certain area to get a certain amount of throughput. So what's our rate here? Uh, 56 core fragments per second. It looks like we're already bottlenecked on the actual delivery cannons. 
but we might have to make some more of those. I already have them with me, to be clear. Core Fragment Crinite. Looking significantly better. Well, definitely looking a lot better than when we had nothing for a while. How about Cryonite itself? Uh, specifically Cryonite. We are consuming it. Fantastic. Uh, Cryonite rods. Consumption is happening. So not long until we get our Cryonite slush. I should probably crank up the priority on this stuff because this supports our thermofluid, which supports our antimatter stream, which supports everything. Uh, it's very important. Oh, I didn't notice we were making some. It went through that delivery of Crynite kind of quick. 80 per second. I guess that's not that slow of a rate of consumption. Uh, let's see. Crynite is rolling in. What's our current rate? Crynite. Just regular Crynite. Uh, 1.6k per minute consumption, approaching a thousand per minute reduction. Yeah, I hate to say it, but, oh wait, we should, um, we should upgrade the modules for that. So we can actually just get rid of half of this. And give it better modules. alone will increase uh, what we get out of this, and it'll also increase our overall throughput for a lot fewer machines. Probably the same here. Yeah, we can do almost four belts of cryonite out of this, and we can consume four belts. Okay, it's probably about time I admit that I need to make a proper array of cannons here. So we're going to go for... I don't know how many, to be honest. Ruteski, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, rate calculator tells us that one of these can move uh, 10 core fragments per second. And Sim Chiron, thank you for the follow also. Uh, but the thing is, we're so far from Nalvis that 600 megajoules. It takes a long time for this to recharge. 
We're also, if we're going to have a lot more cannons, we also need to redo the uh, cannon supply thing. Okay. Also... The way I had this set up, some of the stuff that's needed for media defense installation ammo uh, comes in over here, so... I guess the first thing... Only fans. No, no, no thank you. Uh, we can go full speed ahead here, actually. There's no shortage of electricity. And it's all perfectly renewable, 24-7. Uh, I'm pretty sure we can't prod this. Good. Kind of. Speed modules go burr. Uh, I'm sure... I'm sure this is fine for... Copper. And what's our rate from one of these machines? 1.13 delivery cannon capsules per second. Uh, well, how many drills do I want? I don't know. Uh, the question is how much, how many core fragments do we need? How much cryonite would it take? Um just to keep this thing going 24-7. Can we maybe aim for that? I'm sure that's overkill. 158 cryonite rods per second. Uh, rods come from the furnaces. We're doing three productivity modules. I can't really... Three productivity modules, but we've got these beacons. I need to measure it. Er, indeed. Are these machines going to be able to keep up? Like one stack inserter each for input? Uh, that's a yes. Okay, so we're still going to do the uh, delivery cannon capsule production over here. How many core fragments? All of them, yes. Uh, back to Nalvis. Why do we have no speed modules here? Oh no. Um, you know what? I have a better idea for how I can measure this really quick. Turn the crafting combinator away, set this to cryonite rod, rate calculator, 2.7440 cryonite per second. Um, come to think of it, I should just assume that we have enough smelting. If we don't, we make more smelters. Uh, but I need to know how many turns into what, actually. So, let's just call this 2 in becomes 2.7 out. Uh, so, whatever this is, divided by 2.7. Uh, 158.4 over 2.7. Let's say that we need 60 cryonite per second. Uh, and if we have... Where are our spiders? Where's our cryonite block? Where am I? Who am I? Why don't we have prod modules here? Oh no. Uh, I guess let's get some delivered. 
62. That's going to be nowhere near enough. I've got a whole bunch of them though. But we didn't even get... Oh yes we did, we got one of these at least fully loaded with prod sixes. So we can see... Let's see... We need, I said we needed 60 crinite per second, right? 59.96. 61 core fragments per second. And change. Is probably enough to support the base. We've actually got almost enough already. If we go for like 16 drills, which we can probably, yeah, very easily afford, um, that'll be enough. The question is how many cannons does it take? Um, without having, uh, without being able to see exactly how long it takes to recharge this. What is it? What's it doing? I thought it... Wait, what? Let's look at this one. We know this always has enough input. This one right here. We know the recipe is five seconds. So, this should fire the moment... Um, this should fire the moment this charges up. Yes, it does. It actually fires before we see that bar reach the end. Weirdly enough. And then five seconds is... This This isn't rendered time-wise in very high definition, but it looks like we can estimate about 12 seconds. So... Uh, 50 core fragments move every 12 seconds. Is 4.17 per second. We need, let's call it 16 cannons. Okay. So how about... Something like this. And then... Uh, I don't really want to do a three belt input, do I? Oh, also we need the delivery cannon. Okay, let's move this apart a couple of tiles. We leave that there. One, two. We could do input for uh, the delivery cannon capsules here. actually gives us an even number of belts for the cryonite. I think we're going to need like about 16 drills as well. So that's convenient enough. Uh, let's do it like this. Can I not? Oh. Alright, flip that. And... Same kind. 
kind of input over here. Or Ghetto, thank you for the follow. Well, you're welcome. Hope you're doing well. I hope I brought enough belts. I did not bring enough belts. Maybe I can steal from here and or use some more undergrounds. Uh, I can definitely use more undergrounds over here. Oh, you're joking. It's one short. No. That's tragic. Let's just do it like this. same settings as this one. Red wire for the left, green wire for the right. This is for the inserters that pick up the delivery cannon capsules. I don't suppose that reaches. I don't suppose that reaches. Weirdly enough it does. Uh, that's because it's like the middle of this thing that's actually being connected to. I think that's how that works. And red wire. We're not going to be able to do the same trick here. Can we pick up dollies this? We actually can. Err. Uh, we're just going to piggyback off a bit of belt here. Turn that into mode of operation nothing. It's just normal belt. And, you know what, at this point, for the symmetry, I feel I have to. Okay. Then we need a pylon substation. And... One down here somewhere. already 16 drills. Um, I want to remove the old ones just because diminishing returns. I want to see the actual rate. All right, rate calculator go. 65.49 per second. This should be pretty much exactly what we need. Maybe I should go a little bit further than exactly what we need while we're here, though. Uh, we're actually only halfway to using up our power. If I double the drills... Wait, what's our rate versus the belt? 32. If I double the drills, it's probably going to fit pretty well in... Uh, in terms of what's going to fit on the belt. And then we're going to need like 50% more cannons up here. Why undergrounds between the drills? Uh, mostly because I ran out of blue belt. But it also means fewer entities, I think. Also, in general, when you design things with more underground than straight belt, if they're big, uh, it actually means carrying a lot less stuff. Fair enough, indeed. Alright, so 50% more of this. Uh, where should I copy it from? Mm. 
No, we're out of belt. Do we have any... No. We can pick this up and not end up with any random specific recipes. Okay. Copy that over there. Pick up all the belt. Remove this for now. Make sure these are connected. Oh, I didn't copy the settings. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's just Cryonite core fragment has to be greater than zero on these. Let's check. Uh, cryonite core, core fragment cryonite. Yep, we output that signal when we want it sent to us. And it's actually going to be the same setting on all of these, regardless of the wire color. here, this goes here, and we should be able to mouse over and see all of those connected. Oh. And last but not least, uh, we need to just bring over these delivery cannon capsules. Wait, what's the rate on this? 1.13 per second. Let me go for a long arm here. And we're gonna go... Under, underground. Uh, let's see, the theoretical maximum consumption it's actually 4.8 delivery cannon capsules per second. Uh, we can't keep up with that indefinitely with what we've got. But I'm guessing we'll only need that at peak. Guessing. actually want those on opposite sides of the belt. Also, um, let's do Buster Chest, Delivery Cannon Capsule, and put those in here. Oh, this doesn't have power. Just barely. There we go. Uh, I didn't actually check the rate from all of this. 92 per second. That's just slightly more than two belts. I can live with that. So these belts should definitely always be saturated. 
Uh, we should bottleneck on the cannons. If not bottleneck on the cannons, bottleneck on the delivery cannon capsules. Which, with this setup, we can only make... Uh, theoretically, 2.26 per second. But I don't think we're going to need that sort of throughput all the time. And if we do, I guess we'll just have to build some more. But we've actually got... Oh, these are the specific ones. Don't take them. And just shove this in here. Or in here. I actually can't. They're all waiting to... By, uh... Oh crap, they're all aimed at the same chest. Uh, alright. The ones on the right should be configured thusly. The ones on the left should be aimed over here. Fantastic. Uh, can I... Wait, did I get rid of those? How did I get rid of those two super specific delivery cannon capsules? Well, whatever the case, it happened. Unless they just don't show up here in the list. We can definitely get rid of this. Here is a bunch of Cryonite. I guess it doesn't really matter. Oh, I do have them. Alright. Get in there. And get in there. I hate having those things lying around. He didn't steal an inventory, indeed. Power is totally fine. Alright, so the only way we move this bottleneck at this point is... Uh, I think we would add another delivery cannon chest here, and we'll deliver iridium plate and explosives. We're actually bottlenecked on explosives. That's surprising. Why is it in this chest? Well, we're not picking up any more explosives to put in that chest. So I think that's fine, actually. Yeah, we might actually need more... I'm sure we do need more delivery of explosives. Penium has three, four. Although Penium is much bigger. Oh, this isn't configured. Well, there's your problem. Yeah, we should be receiving a lot more explosives now. Not enough to have to worry about more refined circuitry to keep this from overfilling. Um, but we should be able to keep this fed. And what about our prods over here? Let's send this thing downstairs. And we'll get those prods delivered over here. Let's see, we need... Oh, I can actually just count them here. 69 for this side, and another 80 over here. Considering uh, we don't have that, I'm pretty sure. 
Oh, we do. 120. We're actually really close, kind of. I'll go deliver those myself. Oh, and we have a bit of wasted belt here. That was a weird sound. Don't put the cryonite on that belt. How dare you. No. No! I'm terrible at this. Just for the sake of getting rid of it, I suppose. I suppose we can bring the Cryonite Core Fragments over here. And then we can just pick that up manually. should set up the um, faster production of of delivery cannon capsules over there but we're kind of out of room to use this here Could send. Are we getting the explosives there easily enough? Nope, we're still bottlenecking on the explosives. Alright, I'm gonna go back to Nalvis. Uh, bring my prods with me. We're gonna make sure we get the maximum productivity bonus for the um the cryonite core fragments that we are sending and then if necessary i'll come back here and set up more logistics to get delivery cannon capsules over at this end faster But I wouldn't be shocked if we've already got enough throughput. Let's see what this looks like. Wait, what? No, that's fine. There's some inserters that we don't need here anymore. have just used this. Butts. There you go. Alright, back to the ship. Wait, what? Back to the ship? And I think now is maybe as good a time as any for a break. Let's get ready with the words on stream.
Are we there? Alright. Novus Orbit Launch. Pretty sure we've done everything here for now. this and put this here fantastic so ETA two and a half minutes it's like seven minutes real time all right screen save it go and we're going to start words on stream in about 30 seconds. I'll be back in a few minutes. My lunch arrived. Pizza photos in. Fantastic. All right. Good luck. Have fun.
Fantastic. One more? One more. Okay, how'd you all do? Oh, wait, we're still going. I mean, he crushed level 6 already. That's going to be 3 levels, surely. Fantastic. Let's continue with some space exploration. And where were we? Oh, we got back to Navas Orbit already. That's nice. Um, I need to go downstairs with my prod modules. Do we have the prod module ship? We do. Let me in. Let me in. And there's actually zero prod modules here right now. I suppose there would be because they were all delivered to me. Um, all right, let's move this downstairs. And it's going to come back up automatically if I don't change the signal settings, so... I'll just get ready to jump out real quick. Kind of tell how close we are because it's gonna reach max speed just about. No, wait, it stopped. How did it ever reach 34? Alright. And away it goes. Oh, wait, can it not launch yet? Yes, it can. I probably shouldn't have stepped that close. I could have gotten yeeted back into space. Alright. Let's pay that block of visit. Whoops, don't handcraft a car. You wouldn't handcraft a car. Okay. Um, slush. We made some five minutes ago. Some very big spikes, but no consistency yet. Schnipper? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I would and can infect Oreo. 
DRM be damned? That's the spirit. It would be difficult to enforce that kind of artificial scarcity if we could all make automated machines that never require maintenance that do things like this. Then again, I guess if you look at things like software, uh, it basically costs nothing to make a copy already. Alright, so we have the maximum productivity bonus. Uh, we can go as high as... wait, what? 164. Seven speed modules. Oh, this is slightly different. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and a speed three. Fascinating. And we still get the minus 80% speed uh, power consumption. Okay, so we can do 180 core fragments per second here. We get the maximum productivity bonus now. Or the tier 6 productivity bonus anyway. Uh, which means... Which means... Um, let's see. Ryanite core fragment consumption. We're looking at about 4.7, 4.8k per minute. Uh, and it was... We get 10 for 16. Oh, there's so much math to do. Yeah, I think I might have actually skipped a step when I was estimating how many core fragments we need earlier. By the way, I made an Omni Core Crusher for the exotics, excluding pure core fragments to avoid all fluids. Works. Nice. So I'm guessing that required... that's with a Crafting Combinator mod, right? You can actually get the Crafting Combinator mod to waste fluids if you just don't want to deal with them. Yes, I'm guessing that's what you did. Uh, alright, so... Well, it's kind of hard to estimate how many... how many cryonite core fragments we can actually get, because... We're going to be bottlenecked on the delivery cannon capsules. Unless and until I add something here. Alright, fine. Um, we've got a bunch of unused stuff over here anyway. We'll just have to use even more cannons for Hagen. Um, this one isn't being used. Wait, what? Shift left click. Um, and we want to aim these cannons. I think we could actually patch it. We, we might actually be able to patch this without going back. Do we have any assembly threes? Uh, I don't think so. Do we need all of this? I believe we do. I could steal the copper cable thing from here, actually. Yeah, 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 let's do that. What the? Was that just a coincidence? 
was kind of weird timing. Uh, we're going to put copper cable into this chest. And request a chest over here. We've already used these. That one can stay. And... Do we not have any... We have provider chests. Alright, so we're going to put uh, one stack of cable in here. We are going to move cable... Wait, what? What was this inserter doing here? I don't think it was needed. Uh, copper cable... Copper cable... All right, so we got one machine back. Uh, I also don't have the speed modules for it. Unfortunate. Do we have any modules lying around? We have tier threes. It's a start. Uh, I meant to do speed modules there. Omni with bots as well. Had to do it lazy style. Yeah, I could see where belts would be a problem with that build. <laughs> Definitely. Alright, so we're going to do uh, the alternate recipe of delivery cannon capsule. We are going to request... Uh, I should do Iridium Plate here as well. I think the stack size is 40, yep. Uh, one stack of Iridium Plate can go in here. And then request a chest. I'm going to have to pay this place another visit, but I think we can get this done without adding a delivery cannon chest, at least. It's also going to make the belt imbalanced again. Actually, if I do this, these two will be on this side, these two will be on this side. And if it's backed up, then who cares? If it's backed up, that's just kind of a good thing. Alright, so we're going to go one whole stack of that. And now we just need to send Iridium Plate over. So we're going to use this. Uh, we're probably going to send some more explosives as well. Sure, two of these for oh ingots. Oh no, um, we need one more assembly machine, don't we? To turn ingots into plate. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back there just to get this working in the first place. At least that'll give us the chance to do it properly, I guess. Also, my ship has run away from me. Um, why don't we get our first spaceship to pay us a little visit? And 
and I'll come up here and get in my personal ship to go back to Hagen. My new base on a moon already has tier 3 prod modules. Hold them from time to time back to now is to be turned into tier 9. One thing I'm definitely looking forward to for, a f for another playthrough is actually using the tier 9 modules. Uh, producing them, that is, because it sounds like they're going to be... Honestly, it sounds like it's going to be easier to produce um, tier 9 modules in the new version than it is to produce tier 6s right now. I wish the bots were better at keeping up with me. Like if they could just stick to me as soon as they start charging. That would be nice. Oh right, I was going to have the ship land here. Um, What did I call the original player ship? Uh-oh. Oh. No, it's not called Stone Shuttle 2. Uh, Joyride, I remember. Joyride. That was close. I need to do some research now so I consume iron. Rod modules need a lot of copper. Oh yeah, I'm sure they're still going to need a lot of copper. Well, that is not what I was expecting. I'm, I'm guessing this belt is going to be alright after I leave. Yeah, we're fine. Also, I just realized these are only using half a belt. Not that they need to use the other half. Actually, maybe they do. Uh, this gives us half a belt of cryonite plus... This is like a full belt, almost. Or it might actually be a full belt. Uh, that is significantly more than one belt. from each of these columns. If we were to feed it enough, that is. Well, we're probably not going to end up doing that. We're already in orbit. Fantastic. Let's go through the spaghetti to our modern player ship. Off we go to Hagen. Oh, and this is a great time to remember to look for this ship, Nexus Prime, ETA, seven minutes. So in seven, oh crap, I should have, you know what, go back to Nervous Orbit. I was going to say, in seven minutes I need to look over here. Um... But I'm going to try and set up a, uh, an alarm so that we're going to know immediately when this gets back. It's usually easiest just to handcraft these since we use them so rarely. All right. So we're just going to say... Same condition as this. I guess you can't actually copy that there. Uh, if anything not equal to zero. What's an appropriate sound? No. No. How about... 
Where's the, like, how about achievement unlocked? That's not a, that's not what I was looking for, actually. No, it's the end game thing. Here we go. Game one. Okay. That is difficult to ignore and not very, uh, not very annoying. So, I don't know if it's going to work on another surface, um, but I would certainly hope so. We're going to set this to global playback, show alert, spaceship, uh, Nexus Prime is home, keep an eye on heat. And we're going to have to manually, uh, when the ship gets back, this timer should start automatically, but we're going to have to manually keep a note of how long it takes to get back up to 10,000 degrees. And then I want to set this timer to just over that value. So then we've got the ship has to be uh, the ship has to be here long enough to get its heat back, and the data cards have to be empty down here before we go looking for more. Um, I could also add conditions to check for antimatter stream, but I doubt that antimatter stream and water, but I very much doubt this ship is ever going to run into that kind of problem. It doesn't have to leave very often. Hopefully point six fixes that. Oh yeah, I forgot you hadn't patched it yet. Alright, are we almost at... Hagen? Oh, the Arcosphere Ferry is coming back with a grand total of four Arcospheres. It was five last time. Uh, I think one or two more trips and we're going to retire this thing. It was deliberately shaped exactly the same way as a certain old ship so that it could use the same, uh, the same outpost that we already made. But it gets diminishing returns for getting Arcospheres from the same place. And the new ones that we're getting are quite low. Three Arcospheres for 40 collectors. I would stop it already, but honestly, I'm just being a bit lazy. Also, we've got other things to do. Also, we're already very much not bottlenecked on Arcospheres, um, but the Naquium instead. This ship left intentionally ugly? How dare you. Run. Excuse me. Uh, Frenel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um... So I think we still have a bunch of ships waiting for antimatter fuel. Yep. Maybe it was a terrible idea to defunct the old crying, uh, the old thermofluid. Or maybe I just, yeah, I mean, I just vastly underestimated. Uh, how quickly we, we would go through the cryonite slush. That's what we're fixing right now. Sleeping pirates, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. El Pancho, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well also. Uh, our ship is rapidly approaching Hagen. Wave to the Arcosphere Ferry. Do we have any... Oh my goodness. We've got like no ships in motion between Calidus and Stardust. That's actually really bad.
Are you really 180 days into this save? Yep. It's a very long uh, mod, and I have been stopping to do certain things along the way. Also, our UPS could be slightly higher. Just, just a little bit. Alright, so on Hagen... Uh, do we not have any plate yet? I think I forgot. I think I stopped just short of requesting... Oh yeah, that's why, because we need to send ingots. Um, explosives... Two stacks. Actually, let me just copy this from over here. Let's not do that, actually. There shouldn't be steel in here. But it looks like we went for two stacks. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, and then ingots. Stack size is 20. Let's go for 40. Ingot greater than zero. Target is Hagen. Right about here. And then we need to actually request Ingot. And this thing should have been ingots that we're going to put into the passive provider chest. Do you have a YouTube with all days of playing? Uh, not quite. I did start uploading them there eventually, but not from the very beginning. My apologies for that. Um, but you can find it in the down there. Or here it is, I think. Uh, here it is, I think. No? I could have sworn I had a command for that. Are the commands working? Yes. Okay. Let me just... Grab the YouTube in a hurry. There we go. Uh, yeah, but I do try to upload them all after they... Well, by the time they expire on Twitch. Uh, oh yeah, that's correct, actually. We do need plate. So we need to turn uh, ingots into plate. Why are there no... Oh, there are ingots here. Fantastic. Quite a, quite a few, actually. Um, can we put... Put this here. And we'll put an ingot machine here. I mean, a plate machine. And then shove that into a passive provider. I still have them archived. If you miss any for YouTube, let me know. Uh, yes, definitely. That's something I need to get sorted. Uh, I just need to figure out how we're going to move those gigantic files, actually. Eventually start SE.6 from scratch. That's true. I've been watching for a long time, and now I really love how much effort you put into the mod. Thank you. Well, I mean, effort into playing the mod, right? Obviously, I didn't make the mod myself. Uh, Alright, so that is delivery cannon capsules. Um, we're not keeping up. Hmm. Do 
we need another one of these. 4.72, 10.56 per second, that's a yes. Requester. Provider. And our power is still totally fine. That can almost keep up with these two going full speed all the time. And I'm thinking... oh, wait. So we're looking at 4.52 delivery cannon capsules per second. Oh, that should be... I forgot to factor in how this is actually, like, more than twice as slow as rate calculator says. We still did need to add some stuff here, though. Um, but yeah, like 2.4 per... Uh, about 2.2 or maybe 2 per second should be more than enough. Um, but yeah, so these two should be able to go almost full speed. When will I begin with point six? Um, probably relatively soon, but I might not put in, you know, an average of 30 hours a week to 0.6 like I did with this version. With T-Hacks it's always five minutes? Yeah. Uh, after this playthrough I want to play Oxygen Not Included, and maybe more than one day a week of variety stuff. In fact, definitely more than one day a week of not the same thing. Um, but I could maybe play at least a couple of days a week of Factorio and Oxygen not included at the same time, perhaps. Uh, otherwise it's going to be quite a while before before I get back into space exploration. Um, I'm happy to take a break from it, but I don't want it to be a long break. Would you be open to a multiplayer effect? Oh, yes, absolutely. That could be fun. Um, that also helps with the sheer volume of work that needs to be done in this mod. Okay. Uh, I think this outpost is... Excuse me, struggling a bit with my voice today. Uh, I think this outpost is probably functionally perfect at this point. Uh, if these can move 240 per second, but it's actually a bit more than twice as slow, let's say 100 core fragments per second. Um, and I think the delivery cannon capsules can probably keep up with it at this point. So maybe we need to send explosives even more faster. We have plenty of explosives here, right? 12k. Okay. Do we need more Logibots? We've only got 49. Wait. Wait. Was this built with the assumption that 50 Logibots could keep up forever? Or... 50 bots. Available logistic bots. Oh, I see what the problem is here. Um, because available logi bots never gets quite low enough to trigger a delivery, because we are only looking for one stack of bots at a time. Okay, so we should have some Logibots being delivered here pretty soon. I should probably rename this station so that we can actually 
differentiate. I think this is our guy. Yep, 161 logistic bots on the way. Uh, I'll just double check that actually. With, click on the temporary stop, you can see where it's going. Oh, so we've got one, two, three, four, five cannons aiming explosives over here. Uh, two for iridium ingots. Uh, we don't have any troubles with making delivery cannon capsules on this end. Right in time for point seven? Yeah, probably. Okay. I think we can leave here now. And... Uh, I guess let's continue... Oh, we already finished. That works. Should we build more solar panels while we're here? Probably. We've only got enough for one more block. We don't even have to go to any trouble to get enough range. That's nice and easy. Delete those. And then we can start deleting these. Okay. I was going to say how close are we to getting Naquium, but then I remembered Naquium hasn't been moving because we have to solve this high uh, thermofluid and therefore cryonite issue. But we're seeing a lot more motion here now. Let's look it up. Let's look at the graph. Uh, cryonite. Everything cryonite. Last hour? Core fragments? Uh, that's not core fragments. Very, very good. Big, big, much, much, much more area under the graph here. Uh, Cryonite itself is about the same. Consumption is, of course, going to be a bit spikier. Because train blocks and cryonite rod also spiky. Um, what's our priority here? A hundred. Let's make it super, super high. So we can be absolutely sure this is the first place cryonite rods go. Actually, cryonite itself. Uh, only becomes crushed... Cr Wait, what? Oh. Cryonite becomes crushed cryonite. How did I forget that? I thought cryonite... washed cryonite. Where are we processing the cryonite? There isn't another bottleneck that I'm... that I forgot about, surely. That would never happen. Um, I actually... I actually have no idea where we are processing the cryonite into crushed cryonite. Uh, what, and, and into washed cryonite. We had an old block that did it all, and I'm pretty sure I got rid of that. What is this train doing? It's missing a little bit of barrel. I think this block is old. Yep, let's just move you on. Um, mark that for deconstruction. In fact, why don't we get... 
Oh, I forgot about this. Get out deconstruction spiders on the job. Assuming they have the inventory space for this job. Uh, yeah, they kind of do. I'll get them to visit the mall. I'm probably going to forget about this by the time I have them ready again. But yeah, where are we making cryonite? Where, where are we crushing? Why don't I look over here and see where this train is taking it? Here we go. We figured it out. I think this is up here. There we go. Considering this is empty right now, I think we probably have... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is... This is definitely enough throughput. Um... And we're turning it straight into cryonite rods. Does that mean I've never actually made cryonite rods in the Omni smelters? Looks like it. I could hit this place up with some prod modules, um, but I've only got 135 right now. Plus 56. 191, and we would need, uh, I think I can check without doing anything if I just, nope, never mind, well, it's 100, it's 500, also, that would mess up our ratio a bit, I'm pretty sure this has been carefully measured. We have just under four belts of cryonite rod per second. I didn't mean to close that. Uh, for a little bit less cryonite. Or point 0.8? That's harsh. Uh, I see we've got a train coming here, but... Oh no, do we have traffic problems as well? How many roadblocks are we going to run into when we think we're almost done? Why are you... What? Oh no. Oh no, we have too much iridite here because I forgot to tell LTN. I probably copy-pasted this somewhere and sometimes it removes the wire connections. So, iridite is totally saturated. We've got one, t one, two, three, four, five, six, probably twelve. Because the limit that I put earlier was six. I, I think we have twelve trains of iridite that are attempting to drop off here. Iridite core fragments, that is. Okay, um... I think what I'll do is drop it off at the mall. And it'll eventually recirculate. Uh, what's the name of the station? Erudite Questa? Oh, let me just copy it. Where's the mall? And... I guess I'll just do... a whole lot of passive provider chests, because I don't actually want... I don't actually want this mixed in with all of our storage. Okay. 
so we're gonna move we're gonna add a temporary stop right here and it's already gonna go there go to that station next And we've got 12 of these, probably. You're already leaving. Alright, is our cryonite train able to get here now? Not quite. This is... I hope this doesn't actually fill up before we can get a train in there. So much iridite. Oh, it's moving. It's going to make it. Uh, it might make it. Yes. I'm pretty sure if it's going through all those chain signals, then nothing else is going to pass through here. Okay, we got there eventually. Also, we might need to allow more than, more than one train to pick this up at a time. Now that it's flowing as fast as it is. Any more iridite trains? Yes. I'll just park that there. It'll go for the nearest stop with that name. And two more. <laughs> two more over here. Okay. Actually, I should do this. Alright, I think we just about cleared that up. Alright. And I don't think we're going to have trouble moving our cryonite away from here. From now on. What's this train? Okay. Alright. Well. Now that we have... This is picking up cryonite. And this one is bringing it. Now that we have cryonite flowing again. Uh, we can get thermofluid flowing again. And we can get uh, spaceships moving again. We can get Naquatite flowing again. At least we probably have a whole lot of ships just waiting at Nalvis. Yeah, we have a lot, and I do mean a lot of Naquatite that is just waiting in space um, for these ships to move out of the way. So the moment we get the antimatter pumped in here fast enough, that problem's going to sort itself out. This is another problem we wouldn't have if we had space elevators. Um, just because we'd be using a lot less antimatter stream to accomplish the same goal. And there's our cryonite. What's our rate for consuming it? Uh, is this rate actually like one to one? Are these all the same recipe here? Uh, looks
looks like it. It's kind of a weird shape. Oh, this is actually... Okay. Uh, let's see. Crayonite, we can consume 172 per second. 173, almost. Considering that this block can only make pretty much exactly that, and we know we're not keeping this totally saturated, uh, we know we don't need any more cryonite processing. Though it might be good if we could upgrade the prod modules on this. But to do that, we need room for wide area beacons, which we don't have because regular beacons are 3x3. Three three. It'll definitely be nice on another playthrough, um, knowing ahead of time how to space this out so that we can upgrade it easily. But yeah. So this can do... It's, it's, it's almost one to one. We almost get the same cryonite rods we get as we put in cryonite. Just a little bit more, actually. So what's our cryonite production? Like cryonite itself? Uh, it looks like we can maybe expect 4.8k per minute. And that was my mute button on the wrong, on the wrong side. Uh, yeah, we would actually need to double um, how much how much cryonite we're actually moving uh, if we want to saturate this block. But we do have the processing area at least to keep up with it. Uh, and if we just bring enough core fragments um, to this block, uh, we don't actually have to build anything else. We just have to bring more core fragments. All right. Maybe I will exploit one more. Oh, 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 what's the heat? What's the heat? 9.83k. We didn't get the alarm going off. That's weird, considering we definitely have a signal here. Oh, it's because I... I think it's because I muted the, the sounds for that. But yeah, great timing. This is at 9.9k heat. Our timer is at 19k, actually. So it looks like we're going to say 20,000. Nope, we're a bit higher than 20,000. Considering 1,000 is 16.67 uh, seconds, and that was still 20k, we're definitely going to say this has to be greater than 21,000. Not 210,000. Cool. Good timing. So this thing's going to launch when it has enough heat and when all of these data cards have been taken. Um, which is a bit of a tall order right now because we can only take 2,000 at a time. And I actually set the provide stack threshold to only 20. Maybe I should set it a little bit lower? Uh, 
All right, cool. Uh, I might run this off stream a bit just because we've got some time that needs to pass to catch up with the mistakes that I've made um, that have led to this halting of the flow of Nequitite. But that is just about going to do it for today. Uh, let's see who's streaming Factorio. We got Mucky. Probably give Mucky a raid today. Sure, why not? Thank you all for watching. Do take care, and I'll see you next time. Check out the Discord of Blueprints if you like. If you have any questions, go for it. And uh, till next time, stay safe. Take care, El Pancho. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for the stream. Thank you for coming, Migoth. All right, take care, guys. Ah, oh, welcome, mates. How are you, mate? Thank you very much for the raid, T-Hex. That's much appreciated, man. I hope your stream went well. I have no doubt that it... I have no doubt that it did. Knowing, knowing you, I'm sure you, uh, you had a good time. You're doing SpaceX, aren't you?